It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat is here. We're going to talk about the FTC. They're taking action against Microsoft in their Activision Blizzard acquisition. But what are the merits of the case? Paul thinks he might have had a found a fix for his 12th generation Intel freezes. We've got some Windows 11 information. Microsoft's buying a, a, a buying a part of the London stock market. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and some Xbox news plus the word of the week. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love from people you trust. This. Is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therat, episode 807, recorded Wednesday, December 14th, 2022. You're a contronym. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Collide. Collide is an endpoint security solution that gives IT teams a single dashboard for all devices, regardless of their operating systems. Visit kolide.com slash ww to learn more and activate a free 14-day trial today. No credit card required. And by Nordlayer. Nordlayer is a secure network access solution for your business. Join more than 7,000 fully protected organizations by going to nordlayer.com slash twit to get your first month free when purchasing an annual subscription. And by Code Comments, an original podcast from Red Hat that lets you listen in on two experienced technologists as they describe their building process and what they've learned from their experiences. Search for Code Comments in your podcast player. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with this fellow right here, Mr. Paul Thorat, oh, yeah. in his beautiful aquarium of joy. He's floating around like a cloud, or like fish. a terrarium of terror. A terrarium <laughs> of terror. Hello, Paul. How are you? Hello, Leo. Happy holidays. I forgot my. Uh, darn it! I forgot yeah, my uh, next week. Right, clipping sweater. Week. I'll wear it, but we'll both wear it next week. It'll be twinsies. Okay. All right. Because it's our we're last. We're gonna have a Richard Campbell sighting next week as well. Oh, will he come by? That'd be great. I believe so. Let's do it. Uh, that will be the twenty-first, and it will be our mm -hmm. last show of the year. The twenty-eighth, we have a best of. And then yep. uh, we'll be back with live shows January 4th. Yeah, I want The best of is just going to be two hours of Mary Jo Foley, just because you people won't shut up about it. <laughs> there is a little bit of Mary Jo Foley in the best of, I must say. Yes. <laughs> Quite a bit. Quite a bit, actually. Sure. sure. Uh, we are here. We are gathered together to... Mm -hmm. Tell me what you said last week about the uh, FTC. Actually, yeah, it's funny you say that. I was just wondering what I said last week because since then, this huge thing happened. So I, I, what had happened last week was that Brad Smith, president of Microsoft, had put an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, which was kind of interesting. And, and, and we now know was because he had traveled to Washington, D.C. with some other parts of Microsoft's legal team because they had heard that the FTC was going to block or sue to block their uh, acquisition of Act Activision Blizzard. Now, we didn't know that at the time. The other bits of news were that Microsoft had come to a 10-year agreement with uh, Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to that platform. They also reached out to Steam, and Steam basically said, we don't need this agreement. We know, we, we know you're not taking it away. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just Which kind is of interesting. hysterical. Yeah. That's yep. Gabe Newell just going, come on, I don't want to play this yeah, game. Yeah, we got it. We live right uh, down the street. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're buddies. We're buddies. Yeah. So I basically came to the conclusion that every, you know everyone's obsessed about Call of Duty, which I completely understand. Um, however, what this is really about is, yes, of course, more game franchises makes Game Pass uh, and especially game streaming, cloud streaming, better, cloud gaming. <laughs> we'll get that name right eventually. Um, but really, this is about mobile gaming because mobile gaming is bigger than console gaming. It's bigger than PC gaming. It's, it's the biggest gaming platform there is. And Microsoft has uh, no role in that. And so they wanted to have a role in that. And, and, to me, that was what was happening. Now, of course, when we had our conversation last week, what I didn't know was that the FTC was about to announce that they were going to sue to block this acquisition, which they have done. God bless them. <laughs> so um, I, I'm not going to go on a rant on this one. Um, however, I am going to point out that the more I learn about it, the more unreasonable this is. And... Look, I get, I get it. This is a, 
tens of billions of dollars. It's a major shift for the gaming industry. There's a major industry player that is actively trying to prevent this from happening. It's something that needs to be examined. I, there's no doubt about that. But this is be but this is beyond. They were examining it. Now they are yeah. suing. And uh, yes. I I I'll tell you what you said last week. You said it'll never happen. Okay. They'll never uh, they'll never go after this. There's no reason for them to. But what well, we, I we, always we underestimated yeah, yeah, okay. Lena Khan, right? Who has uh, blood in her eyes for the tech <laughs> industry, and I don't. I yes. think uh, I I mean I shouldn't put words in her mouth, but I feel like she's making. I'm going to make an example of you. Is what that's, this that's is, right. as opposed to now the the thing is, uh, it doesn't go to court immediately. The real pr right. problem for Microsoft at this point is how long this procedure will take. Yep, because this is going to be uh, years. Yeah, okay, May, unless they reach a settlement, right? So um, we'll see our consent decree. We're, we're going to get to that. So the way the more you know, this is one of those things. It's like this twelve stages of grief or whatever it is. We it kind of takes some time to set in what what exactly is happening here and yeah you're right first of all i think this is very political not that i want to go too far down that road but um for everyone who thinks i'm some kind of a bleeding heart liberal i will say three democrats all voted yes on this and uh i disagree with them completely i'll just throw that out there um but this is this is a regulatory body which has experienced years and decades of just letting big tech do it do whatever they want and finally, they're starting to realize, oh, man, this might have been a mistake. We should look at these things a little more closely. And then they decide to go after the one company. <laughs> it's not going to change the dynamics of anything, really. I mean, ultimately, the number three player in consoles will still be the number three player in consoles. The games that you want to play will still be on all the platforms you want to play them on. It's really not going to change much, except for who owns what. I mean, it, it's, it's. I understand why Sony might be upset about this. I think it's notable that no other major India industry players are upset about it. Um, but let's put ourselves decide. though. I want to put myself in her mindset. Uh, yep. I don't want to assume it's just, uh, you know, uh, let's just kill the next big tech major net tech merger for no, you know, just cause yeah, it but, is. I, but Leo, I really believe that's what it is. I think I, it I, is, I, but, but is so, but let's look at the competitive landscape. So is there, is mm -hmm. there any case to be made that this is bad for gamers or will squash competition? Maybe. How about indie game de uh, developers? This is no. Making... This, uh, this is one of the biggest. No, no. In fact, uh, Microsoft has done great work with indie developers. Um, and I don't, I don't know as much about what Sony has done. I know Sony has its own independent games uh, program or whatever as well. But the, Microsoft ID at Xbox has done um, a fantastic job for them. I, this isn't a shift away from those people, right? Um, I, I think there's just an understanding that, my, belatedly, Microsoft kind of looked at how they've competed over the years, and they failed every console generation, right? So, well, you know, why? Why is that? Um, they did let, well, I don't let is a strong word, but they, you know, Call of Duty was uh, an Xbox exclusive, and then it became a PlayStation one. I, at the time, I said that was a huge mistake, at, because the Xbox 360 if they had one market, it was first-person shooters. And then letting them go to PlayStation, I thought, was a big mistake. They might have not been able to do anything about that. The other thing that you would say, kind of comparing Sony and Microsoft in the console market, because they're the only two that are really directly comparable, is that the big difference between the two for many years was that Sony had more exclusives. And this was one of the things that kept came up again and again and again. And so uh, largely because of Phil Spencer, it, I would say, let's just say because of Phil Spencer, uh, Microsoft started buying up game studios. They wanted more first party content. They wanted more exclusives. They wanted to have uh, more control over their own destiny. Cause that's, that's the thing they were getting hammered on. They look, most of the big games were everywhere, but the uh, PlayStation had a bunch of exclusive AAA games that just were not ever going to ship anywhere else. Um, since then the world has changed, right? Sony is making a big push in PC gaming right now, right? Which is actually really interesting. Um, by the way, so is Google in a way. Google is looking at PC gaming, even though they're purely mobile web um, for the most part. Microsoft has expanded, has gone into subscription services with Game Pass. They've gone into cloud streaming or uh, yeah, with game streaming with, uh, I always forget the name of it, Xbox Cloud Gaming, sorry. And um, Sony has responded with their own PlayStation Plus, whatever, whatever. And, you know, they're working, they're they're competing. And that's, you know, that's what they do. But Microsoft is trying to close the the gap between PlayStation and Xbox on console. 
I think the hardware, they've done a great job, uh, especially this recent generation. Um, they have two price points, which I think is really important. Um, in the beginning, one of the complaints about the Xbox Series S is that maybe it would be a little underpowered and wouldn't compete effectively against PlayStation 5. So far, that's proven not to be the case. Um, so they're in a pretty good place. But where these companies are both not doing great, I would say, is in mobile. Microsoft basically has zero presence in mobile. I have no idea what Sony has in mobile. I don't think it's much, if anything, but um, Activision Blizzard has a bunch, right? So the competitive landscape, if Microsoft were allowed to acquire Activision Blizzard, and I think we have to asterisk that a little bit because we have to say, look, let's be realistic about what that means. Microsoft will be forced to make some legally binding agreements about what it will and will not do with some of the most popular franchises, right? We, Call of Duty is the one that keeps coming up, but I, I think it's more than that. But um, I, the thing I've said all along and the thing when I said it would never happen, the reason for that was because this is the agreement they'll make. They'll say, look, Call of Duty will always be on PlayStation. Call of Duty will be on your version of Game Pass and your version of cloud gaming. Look, th there you go. Like we're not, we're not, we're not, it will benefit Xbox users, but it won't detract from PlayStation as a platform. That that's that's the goal with that. And Microsoft will have mobile games for the first time. But that's for, for mobile gamers, that's just a shift in the name at the beginning of the game when it boots, right? It's not, it doesn't really change anything. It's not like Microsoft picks up Candy Crush and takes it off of iPhone or something like that doesn't make sense. And that's the big thing with the FTC argument that bothers me. We can talk about what Microsoft has done, and we can talk about what an agreement will force Microsoft to do, but the FTC is focusing on what Microsoft might do. It's like it's like their version of minority report. It's like we rolled the ball down the thing and it said you were going to take away PlayStation, you know, take away Call of Duty from PlayStation. Sorry, you're guilty. And it's like, guys, we, we literally came to you and said we would not do that. Um, so I don't. I, th I would say overall the net effect on the gaming industry honestly would be a minor positive. And the only reason I say that is because for those people that have chosen Xbox, they will now have more games in that stable that they can uh, play if they choose to pay for Microsoft uh, online service. Uh, and I, I don't see any other major changes. But the FTC sees lots of possibilities, <laughs> you know, which is kind of interesting. Ultimately, though, I do think this is about we haven't done enough on antitrust. Let's start doing enough on antitrust. And they go after the next thing. And by the way, it's it's big money. I mean, it it needs to be looked at. There's no doubt about that. But I on I think on Twitter or somewhere, somewhere I wrote this. I said, you know, this is like. Let's close this barn door after the horses ran out of that barn door. <laughs> you know, it's like it doesn't it's it's like a, a curious matter of timing. Now we have an FTC that doesn't want to settle with companies. They want to sue them. They want to show that they're strong. They want to show that they're serious. And I just think this was the wrong. You're making an example of the star student in class, not the little problem kids in the back who are flicking, you know, elastic bands at the girls or whatever, you know. And I, I just find that crazy because there are, you know, we, you and I had our little discussion or debate or whatever about whether or not Apple is or is not a monopoly. And by the way, you, victory to the, to the laurels, to the victor, you won that well, one. I, not exactly. I mean, look, we'll see what happens, but I think, you, I, I hope you did actually. I mean, I, I think this is a very, I, the one thing I had to explain to people is I, I, based on what you said later, I, I feel like we're kind of on the same page and you're, you're, you kind of pushed me to make me make my point. I which was, I, I was, honestly, I was because I agree with you. Uh, but it's I was, fine. I was channeling uh, Alex Lindsay, and by the way, yesterday, <laughs> so I mentioned that, and he gave me all the excuses, and I, and I, I'm brought up, including the fact that both Microsoft and Sony charge thirty uh, percent. Yeah, but those are different. Anyway, so <laughs> I guess my my issue at the time was only that I, I honestly didn't even think about this. I was. To me, this is a foregone conclusion. Right. Let's move on to this other thing. And then you right. pushed me on this and I was like, yeah, I, I had to, to sort of collect it. I myself. I want you to defend it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I look, I think it's defensible, <laughs> you know, obviously. But um, whatever one, anyone thinks, look, it, 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 look, I, I, unfortunately, I deal with people in my comments section who are like, I think Apple should be allowed to, allowed to do anything they want. It's their platform. If you don't like it, just go to a different platform. It's like the most narrow-minded, simplistic view of the world. And I feel bad for those people. Like, that's crazy. But okay, whatever. Like, at the very least, we have these big companies, and Microsoft's one of them, right? But Amazon, Apple, Google, and Meta, 
that are, in my mind, monopolies abusing their market dominance. Let's not quibble over semantics. They are dominant and they are abusing their market dominance. I mean, there's no, you really can't argue that. There are so many examples of it. And by the way, if you don't believe it, that's fine. Please understand that regulatory bodies all around the world have multiple lawsuits against all these companies. Like <laughs> They're all being investigated. The FDs, uh, the um, European Union is taking action starting in 2024 that will curb certain behaviors. This is happening. So it's, you know, I get that we all have different opinions, but the reality is the regulatory bodies of the world are going after these companies, you know. Of those companies, though, Microsoft, I think we could have a conversation about Teams. I don't know if we talked about this last week. I mean, when I look at Microsoft and I think about antitrust today in 2022, um, there's really not much to look at here, right? I mean, you you can we can narrow the definition of things so much that you know, okay, I guess, you know, obviously they have a, a monopoly of sorts and it's still in the PC market, which is kind of interesting. Although I think it's worth pointing out that Apple and the Mac surpassed double digit market share for the first time ever recently. And they're kind of going gangbusters. So the market there is kind of happening naturally. It doesn't mean they shouldn't have gone after Microsoft 20 years ago. I don't mean it like that, but that it's interesting to see how that has or has not changed. I think the real issue for Microsoft when it comes to monopoly is going to be, it's kind of a weird thing to say. It's its like office productivity, right? It's what used to be office. And in fact, when when Windows had was dominant in the personal computing industry, and that was personal computing, one of the side shows there was, you know, actually, there's this other product that's even more dominant than Windows, and that's called Office, right? Because Office at the time was also on the Mac. Office today is now on mobile too, right? So and we're not talking. And Office is not Office. Office is three. Uh, Office three sixty five is Microsoft three sixty five is whatever you know this giant thing. And um, Microsoft has done, I would say, with Teams, something very similar to what it did with Internet Explorer in Windows ninety five back in nineteen ninety five ninety six. Right? Um, they bundled a product with another product, given it gave it away for free. And over time, they actually surpassed the capabilities of that competitor, who in you, that case took them to court, right? Do you think the DOJ case against Microsoft back way back in the 90s was justified? How did you feel about it at the time? I'm wondering. It is astonishing that I still write about Microsoft today. I wanted that company <laughs> broken up. No, I... I, I you, you agreed with what the, the DOJ was doing. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah. I, uh, I cannot believe it wasn't broken up. I can't, I, and not into two companies. I'm, I was thinking three or four. I had yeah. very specific plans for yeah. how this should have went so, down. So did Dvorak, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it is humbling to think back now and look at how much more dominant Google and Apple especially are today and compare it to the relative smallness of what Microsoft was doing. I the, And uh, actually, I think this is, I think it's Cory Doctorow. Somebody, somebody of our time today has referred to big tech, these big tech monopolies as stupid. Like they're, they're succeeding despite their own like stupidity. Like they're actually not that it's not like the genius, genius strategicians or anything. Like I sort of feel like Microsoft in the nineties succeeded despite itself. And in, in many ways, I'm surprised they didn't stumble uh, more badly. Uh, and I feel that same way about Apple and Google today with these mobile platforms. It's like, I, I look, <laughs> please, Make all the money in the world selling your phone, Apple. Uh, make all the money in the world licensing your operating system, Google. That's I have no issue with that. Everything else you do is terrible. <laughs> you know, it's like terrible, and it's it's really it, it's it's hard, it's hard to understand when people try to defend that behavior. But um, anywho, I all right. So they sue. They sue. Are they sue to block it? Here's what we've learned since then. First of all, the FTC suggested in its filing and in in, in its announcement more explicitly. That Microsoft had, so here's the rationale. We're afraid Microsoft's going to do something terrible. The reason we are afraid of that is because they did this exact horrible thing before. They told EU regulators that they were not going to pull ZeniMax, which is Bethesda, software off of different platforms. And then when you okayed it, they did just that. There were two games, uh, Redfall and one other one, that they pulled off whatever platform and see, see. So the EU, the EU actually came out public and said that never happened. Microsoft never made that promise. And by the way, those two games they pulled or whatever games they pulled, 
they're not triple A titles like Call of Duty and whatever else. It's they're just too good. They just didn't make market sense to bother. You know, uh, yes, they did become what uh, the uh, the FTC calls Microsoft exclusives. I would call them Xbox exclusives. But um, I don't think this was like a millions of people around the world crying because they couldn't get Redfall on their Nintendo <laughs> Switch or whatever it was. I, I just they, they made such a big deal out of this. But Microsoft immediately denied this ever happened. And then the EU came out and said it didn't happen. Now, if you want to take a nuanced reading of the complaint versus whether or not Microsoft kind of lied to the EU, it's actually is it is pretty nuanced. It's not clear. It's not like, oh, the FTC lied, you know, or the FTC completely got this wrong. Um, I, I even looked at it like, well, maybe they said something because they refer to them as European regulators. I thought maybe they promised the UK what's it called competition to markets authority. Uh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what they meant by European. But actually, if you look at the literal complaint, they call out the European Union and the yeah. European Commission, which is the regulatory body there. Yeah. So, okay, there's that. Then Microsoft <laughs> reveals in the wake of this two different things that I think are incredibly damning for the FTC. One, they offered them a consent, a consent decree agreement. We will legally be, like, we're not just going to say it. We're going to sign papers that require us to do things like bring Call of Duty to the Xbox, uh, to the PlayStation for 10 years or whatever it is, right? The FTC listened to this and said, yeah, we're going to sue you anyway. Don't care. Also, Microsoft didn't just offer Sony Call of Duty for 10 years, you know, to no reply whatsoever. They offered to bring Call of Duty to Sony's version of Game Pass slash cloud gaming, which is PlayStation Plus. They said, look, you're afraid that we're going to make, make people go to Xbox because this will be like an, a better thing on Xbox. We'll bring it to your thing, too. Complete silence. Nothing. Nothing. So I this, to me, is outrageous. Now, you had said up front, you know, I concluded with, I still think this is going to go through, et cetera. And the, yeah, I actually do still. I think Microsoft's going to win this. because, I, But it's going to take years. It has to go... Well, well, depends who depends who. So the first thing is uh, it goes to the FTC and right. then it goes to uh, an in, kind of internal process, right? A judge that uh, it's through the FTC. And then only then does it wend its way into the uh, courts. And then, of course, there's all that appeals and so forth. Is if the, if I the think FTC, there needs to be a little uh, a special dinner at the White House, maybe if get the, the air FTC, of the president and say, man, I, I think if the FTC wants this. So. It's a war of attrition. If they want, it, they can they can drag it out yeah. so long. The FTC can you say? The FTC can. Yeah, but, so but, Lena so, but, Khan uh, has decided that. But what's she, the? But what's the point? Well, that's like, a good I, question. You, what's the point? You in asked the first up front. Place? You asked up front. Like, why would they do this? Right now, I don't mean to bring like a like a xenophobic uh, aspect into this, but the only company that's complaining is Japanese. Aren't you here to protect U.S. companies and U.S. consumers? Well, she like, must think there's a... So there's two costs. There's two reasons for uh, antitrust, especially in Lena Khan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her big thing is monopsony, not monopoly. <laughs> monopsony. Monopsony. Like but the, yeah, but sure. I would, I you know, grossly simplifying, there's two big issues. There's harm to consumers and harm to innovation, harm to other companies. Right. I, I don't see a harm to consumers because... Um, there are so many other companies still doing this. Maybe a harm to innovation. That's why I asked about indie games. I actually developers. think this benefits consumers ultimately. Yeah. Like one one of the things that happened this year and will continue happening next year is that individual console game purchases for AAA games have gone up from sixty to seventy dollars. Like so, that they're hitting this weird price point where a lot of people are going to hold off on purchases they might have done anyway in the past, right? That kind of thing. So you make you start making games available via subscription services. I don't mean game streaming, but just Game Pass, where you can download the thing. So you're paying fifteen bucks a month. You were already paying uh, six to, to eight dollars a month for Xbox Live Gold on Xbox and whatever the Xbox Live Gold equivalent was or is on PlayStation. I don't know. Um, PlayStation. It doesn't matter. PlayStation. I don't know what it was called. It doesn't matter. But now they have this PlayStation Plus, PlayStation, whatever they call it, and they have. They're basically lining up against Game Pass and, and cloud uh, gaming. Make it available over there too. So, I mean, first of all, it, it doesn't harm the competition. Sony, which I guess I don't. U.S. Antitrust isn't that involved with. 
but it certainly doesn't help or hurt consumers. In fact, it, it, it eases a, fine, a burden in some ways, I think, on people uh, and lets them uh, play more games than they would have otherwise. Right. I mean, I plus well, here's Microsoft. The Yep. Here's the monopsony argument. And monopsony yeah, what is, the monop is yeah. a market situation in which there's only one buyer. And so monopsony hurts, would hurt potentially in the game developers. If there are, I mean, there isn't only one, but if there was, you know, a small number of buyers of video games or, or publishers, that would be a monopsony. Yep. And so I think that that, well, <laughs> I mean, we'll see what her argument is. Yeah, I haven't read yeah, the pleading, yeah. but that could potentially be the argument is by doing this, Microsoft's right. kind of pulling up the ladder behind them on other game companies being created. Look, I, it's a fact that a game like Call of Duty requires a studio That's that can spend thing. money like a movie studio. This thing. is not There's no the guy, guy in a basement writing a yeah. game, you know? Yeah, the super meat guy is not making Call right. of Duty 5 or whatever. Right. Like, this is, these are hard games to make. But you could I, see if somebody uh, developed, you know, Dwarf Fortress, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they said, well, we, you know, Microsoft, we can't get it well, on the Xbox because <laughs> so, Microsoft won't, right. you know, is a monopsony. I, there, There is an example of something that's a little bit like, I don't know why you just reminded me of this, but remember when Netflix went from being a DVD shipment system to being an online service, right? Yeah. And they had streaming videos. And it was in the a beginning, big deal, right? Everybody said it's it was a big deal, but in the beginning, but, it, but the, <laughs> the beginning of it was small, right? It was like, we... You pay for this DVD thing. We have this other thing. We're going to give it to you as part of your subscription. So you can install this app on your, you know, on your device or whatever, play it on your TV. And then all the movies were like these weird B to direct, direct, uh, direct to video things that were like, what is this stuff? Like, what is this? This is crap. And over time, of course, it got super high quality. Over time, it turned into HBO. Like they, they make their own content. Right. They do this stuff, right, whatever. Right. So it's not fair. This is not a direct comparison because Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Cloud Gaming were not what Netflix was, right? In other words, that isn't where the dregs went. And I don't mean to call, actually, let me rephrase it. I, that's not where indie gaming went, right? They were like, look, we got no one, none of the big players are signing up for this. Let's get all the indie guys in. It wasn't like that. I, Xbox Game Pass and now Xbox Cloud Gaming are, if anything, a mix of those things. Like you see AAA titles, you see mid, you know, size titles, and you see indie titles. Um, so it's not exactly like that, but I guess you could make an argument that did the arrival of Netflix, the service we know today, make it harder or did it make it easier for second rate content to make its way to people's eyeballs? I guess I'd argue it has made it easier because I think that stuff's still there too, right? <laughs> you know, um, or it's there somewhere. You could watch it on YouTube. It's, 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 you know, we have these choices now. So I don't, anyway, just to bring it back to gaming, I guess, I don't see indie gaming becoming less important or less of a, a thing because of this. It just shifts where this stuff is published. I, those games are still important to Microsoft on Xbox, on PC, whatever. They'll still be in Steam. They'll still be on Xbox. They'll still be wherever. Um, but... I mean, honestly, have, need... monop Microsoft has a monops monopsony on the Xbox, just as Apple has a monopsony on the App Store. I mean, that's the that's the monopsony. Yeah. They're the only people who can who control buy games, right? They control all the games on the Xbox. Yeah, on the Xbox. On the, but this is not just Xbox. But, that, yeah, that's the point. Like this is I, Xbox console. I'm yeah. sorry, PC and and I, I'm really curious what her what her logic is. Um, it's on the surface. The, the fact that we've seen you. the complaint. I've read yeah. this thing twice. Oh, you did. Right? Oh, good. All right. I, I have not walked away from it saying, oh, okay, I can see this. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I don't, I read it and I'm like, it again, it's, it's slightly outrageous. It, it's, um, I will say it's interesting. Uh, even during the pre previous administration, you would get some sort of official uh, documentation like this from a government body. Like this is actually pretty well written. Like this is, you know, but in the industry and reading this, I'm like, yeah, this is not, they're not making a good point here. You know, they're just not, it really is about what ifs. Well, we're just afraid that, okay, but, but there could, I, you know, look, before we knew about any of this stuff, all Microsoft has to do, we all said was make certain concessions to competitors like Sony and say, we will do this. That's how you fix this problem. I, this lawsuit was not necessary. Yeah. Microsoft was already bending over backwards, Right. And it will be interesting to see, I don't know the exact dates, but I think the EU is sometime in March and the UK is also sometime early next year. They're going to have to weigh in as well. And what happens here 
will impact what ha happens there. No doubt about it. So and, this is uh, the this really weird thing that Lena Khan wrote. I'm just looking at a letter she mm -hmm. wrote uh, that uh, Senator Warren just published, but this was back in March. Warren okay. and a bunch of senators sent her a note saying, please, you know, you got to watch this Microsoft Activision transaction. Because Elizabeth Warren is a huge game player, and God, does she care about this market? <laughs> <laughs> no, but she, yeah. you know, she's she knows something about finance. Anyway, uh, Khan wrote back, I share your concern that, yeah. and this is what puzzles me, monopsony power in labor markets may enable firms to harm workers in a host of ways through undermining their rights and dignity. So although antitrust law in recent decades has generally neglected monopsony, monopsony concerns and harms to workers, given that active, so... I strongly believe that merger investigations must scrutinize the impact on labor markets. I don't, what labor would, how, markets. what would, what, I don't even understand what that would, how, did you catch the use of the word may, which is may, could, might, is all over these documents. Well, it's yeah, just I did notice that. I, I, a lot I, of speculation. Maybe what they're worried about is if you are a game designer, there'll mm -hmm. be too few places you can go to get work, but that doesn't make any sense. And you, Microsoft could clearly prove that's, not the case, right? You don't have to work for a Microsoft Activision. You know, we've completely lost the script on this because a year ago, the big Activision Blizzard story was the toxic environment in their workforce. And yeah, no the kidding. thing we were saying when Microsoft announced this and, and they said was, they're going to clean this up. They're going to do a good thing for the workforce. They're going to do what, what's that guy's name? Bobby Kotick, Kotick whatever. Kotick, the, yeah. Kotick. I mean, uh, all of this happened because Bobby done. was trying to get the hell out of Dodge because it was so many right. investigations yep. of his misbehavior at Activision, and uh, and he oh yeah, saw no, this it's like he got a uh, to dump it. Yeah, Microsoft basically gave him a part. Seventy like, billion this thing dude, goes through go away. Exactly. Yeah, you get a part. Yeah. You'll have um, enough money at least to maybe, handle the lawsuits. Yeah. Maybe the fact that Microsoft just released its investigation uh, and admitted that yeah, they hadn't done a good job uh, with harassment in its own workplace. Yep. Maybe that was. Super bad timing. Maybe yep. that's a concern that, well, now you have sure. two companies with harassment issues. Well, I, they do. Have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's not. Maybe that's what, I mean, about. honestly, maybe that's what this is. I don't know. Well, but then again, you know, you could look at, look, I, bad things happen and mistakes are made and all that stuff. But you also have to look at how people or companies in this case address those problems. And honestly, I don't, I, look, I don't think that stuff ever should have happened, but Microsoft is at least it, belatedly, right? But doing the right thing now. And I think that speaks well for what they might do, like, since we're all speculating. The headline um, on the on the FTC press release is, agency mm -hmm. alleges that maker of Xbox, aka Microsoft, would gain control of top video game franchises, enabling mm -hmm. it to harm competition in high-performance gaming consoles and subscription services by denying or degrading rivals' access to its popular content. Again, Microsoft offered a consent decree and said, "No, no, we'll yep. we'll guarantee we can prove not to do we're not going to do this." Yeah, exactly. Yep, that's what bugs me. Um, they proactive. Well, I don't know proactive. I, I, the, no one will come out and say this, but the understanding is that the FTC alerted Microsoft that this was how they were going to land, and they that's when they went to. They Washington, do. They do say. And by the way, they did this before with Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's the smoking gun. Well, you know, when they got ZeniMax, they 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 went exclusive with Starfield and Redfall. Oh, not with Quake and Doom and Wolfenstein and all those games people actually want to play? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, seriously. Huh? I mean, I don't know. Microsoft has already shown it can and will withhold content from gaming rivals. Today, we By seek the way, to stop Microsoft uh, from gaining uh, uh, control. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, this th stuff makes me lose my mind. <laughs> Microsoft has shown that it can and will withhold games from gaming rivals. Let's flash back about 20 minutes when we were talking about Sony's strategy of game exclusives right. that they held they from their it. rivals. Yeah. That's what competition is. What are you talking well, about? Well, presumably they would act in the same way to block a Sony Activision acquisition as well. I mean... The, the thing that's different is we're not looking at, in other words, this isn't Sony, which only makes PlayStation and Microsoft, which only makes Xbox. That's not the world of today. These companies are both expanding and want to expand further into other markets with games. There's a lot of cross-pollination going on right now. 
And it doesn't make sense for companies that want to expand beyond their own installed base with hardware, which is relatively small, which is the conversation we had last week, 80 million units in the best-selling generation ever for Xbox. Apple has sold more than that in one quarter with iPhones, right? We talked about that. Um, they, they're trying to expand this and this. They want to make this something bigger. Both of them have certain strengths, but Sony has started bringing things that used to be exclusives to PlayStation to the PC, right? Where the world is changing. It doesn't make, this is not Microsoft swooping in to buy Activision Blizzard, take all those games away from Sony, take them all away from the PC. Again, this is sort of their platform, but you know, but that's not what it is. That's not what it is. This is, uh, they're often lucrative franchises on other platforms, multi-platform. I play Call of Duty every day. I play against people who own PlayStations. I play against people who have PCs. That's the world of today. That was not the world of 10 years ago or 15 years ago or whatever. You know, it's it's a different world. Here's here's my hope, and I think this is reasonable, is that uh, the this is going to first go before an administrative law judge. That judge will... Mm -hmm. I presume, as most judges do, try to get the two parties to meet uh, in the middle and end this right. uh, battle. I think if he goes to or she goes to Microsoft and says, look, all we need is a consent decree saying you're never going to do this, that none of these games will ever be exclusive, <laughs> to which yeah. Microsoft has already said, yes, we, we would do that. That, uh, that's what they're at. We already they, said that, think, and they still say I know. This. Well, but maybe yeah. they have to go through this process and then make sure. it official, formal consent decree. And I would bet then that the administrative law judge would say, okay, case case done. It's over. Right. And that can but, happen in a fairly swift fashion. I yes, think. but actually you you raise the specter of what might prevent that from happening, which is there's got to be more than that, right? Like you you, you want to believe that if they take this step, that it's not simple, like this woman's boss told her she's got to sue, stop settling. Got, I don't think it's coming that we, from Biden. I think this is coming from Lena Khan. This is what she was appointed okay. to do. I mean, ultimately okay. it does come from the president because he appointed yeah. her, right? He knew what he was going to do. Um, they are saying now August 2023 – for a trial before an administrative law judge. So yeah. if nothing else, this puts this off for nine months, which is- I know. And now it's like, at that not, point, you're like, what do you, oh, yeah. Well, at some point you have to say, look, let's lick our wounds and move on. I mean, I'm sure one of the things Microsoft is doing collectively is looking out into the world and saying, all right, what else is out there? What if we bought, you know, four or five smaller um, franchises or, or studios or whatever? I don't know. I-, I well, how's Electronic Arts doing these days? Yeah, you know why I, are they why are they buying Activision? I mean, I'm, I'm sure we well, it's about on it. the strength of all those all those, those games. franchises. Yeah. yeah, yep. Not that they would necessarily have to be exclusive. They're not trying to build Xbox's business. They're trying to build no. their business. Selling those games would make them money on every right. platform. Right. Call of Duty. I, it's I, not listen, just Call I, of Duty. I mean, it's also, you know, Warcraft and World of Warcraft. Yes, I, I, right. We keep mentioning Call of Duty, but there's yeah. a lot more to it than yeah. that. I, uh, there is a naive part of my personality that would like to see things like Sony and Microsoft kind of get together and say, Let, let's hammer this out. Like, we have this thing that we're doing. We're going to have these things we're doing in the future with cloud services. But, you know, let's interoperate more. You know, I, I happen to be in the Microsoft space, and this is something that Microsoft has been trying to do with Sony, just game interop, where you can play in the same game together. Sony blocked that. Remember Minecraft? They couldn't play uh, on Sony with uh, players on other platforms. That was that was from Sony. That's them being terrible. If you want to look at past behavior with regards to video games, because <laughs> there's plenty of bad behavior, um, I think Sony's been a, a, a bad actor more than Microsoft has. Um, but... I would like to. I would still like to see them work together, just like I'd like to see Microsoft and Sony kind of work together on things related to browsers and stuff like that. Like, I don't understand why when I browse to, uh, you know, use Edge and I go to Google.com, it's like, oh, you're using Chrome, you stupid idiot, you know. Or if I go to download Chrome with Edge, it's like, oh, what are you doing? We have a way better browser. It's like, guys, I get that we're competing and everything, but I think there just needs to be a point where uh, some people are going to use this, some people are going to use this we work together for the better good. You guys have shared customers like this is stupid. And I think when it comes to interoperability in video games, that's maybe in this, the conversation, but that's maybe, well, it's not more important, but it, it's just as important. I think it's, it's an important aspect of the changing world of video games that I think is getting lost here. Cause it's like Sony versus Microsoft, but 
we're we have shared customers too. The, and and we could share customers through crossplay, right? I mean, we, you know, like I said, I'm interacting with PlayStation people, which, you know, drives me crazy because they're terrible, but it's just, <laughs> a no, it's, they're just a bad um, class of people. They're just, exactly, just, exactly. exactly. Yeah. They would be on the second yes, deck of the Titanic, yes. but um, <laughs> <laughs> we're kidding. Don't send emails. <laughs> All right, I want to um, take a little break. We could. This yeah, is yeah. A, a great subject. Obviously, this is the lead story of the week, perhaps right. of the year. Tomorrow, we're doing a recording mm -hmm. for our uh, holiday episode of Twit, the Christmas Day episode of Twit. So, obviously, I'm not going to make everybody record on a Christmas Day. So, Paul will be there for that. Jeff Jarvis, mm -hmm. yep. uh, Doc Searles, Steve Gibson. Yep. I imagine this will be yes. one of the stories we'll talk about. I want to pick. I'm going to try to yeah. narrow it down to t the ten top stories of the year. Oh boy. Nine of them are Elon. So we need one. I, was gonna say, I, was, I assume nine of them are Microsoft related. Uh, do, do other things happen in tech? Some other things have happened and this will be a chance yeah. for people to hear your thoughts on okay. that. Uh, I, it's fun. We're just, we're bringing in the people who've uh, been around uh, tech a long time, been around Twitter a long time. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. We're going to record that. You could watch live at 1 PM Pacific, 4 PM Eastern. Uh, if you want, but you know what? Save it for a, a treat on Christmas Day. How about that? A little, a little, or a Boxing Day, a special little, little treat. Uh, we'll have more with Paul mm -hmm. and his rants and his rage well, and his upset. No, he had been very calm so far. I, I haven't prodded so. you too much, though. Sure. I will try to do that in the next segment. But I turn into you, somebody, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you varmint. Yeah. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Collide. Don't go all Yosemite Sam on your employees. If you're in IT, Collide has a different way. Turn your employees into the most useful, most best, the best uh, ally you can imagine. Instead of the enemy, they're the ally, right? Right. The challenge with device security has always been this uh, so hard to scale it, right? The bigger you are, the more edge cases you introduce. Those dang employees are at it again with a BYO and a D. The easier it is for significant issues to escape your notice. When remote work took off, psh, just got exponentially worse, right? So whether you're a fast-growing startup that needs to graduate from managing device inventory in a Google spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I know you do that, or uh, I think we do, or an enterprise trying to speed up service desk issues. You need visibility into the fleet of devices in order to meet security goals, compliance, and keep everything running smoothly. But how do you achieve that uh, visibility when your design team uses Macs? Accounting is on Windows. All the, all the developers love Linux. Oh. You get Collide, because among other things, Collide is multi-platform. It's an endpoint security solution that gives IT teams a single dashboard for all devices, regardless of operating system. And you'll love it because, you know, we, we focus a lot on, on, on Collide's uh, that uses Slack and all that stuff. But what we don't talk as much about, about the, the dashboard you've got, you can, you can ask Collide and answer all the questions MDMs just can't. Like, do you have production data being stored on those on those laptops out there somewhere? Or are your developers' SSH keys encrypted? Uh, the private keys aren't sitting in a public folder, are they? Hey. And a host of other data points. You'd have to write a, I don't know, what, what are you doing? Writing a custom shell script to do it? Probably, right? Think about it. If a Linux vulnerability is exposed tomorrow... But just put yourself in this situation. How will you figure out how many of your machines are at risk? You have to go look at each one. What kernel are they each using? File a ticket with a team that manages your MDM and then wait to get a report back, send a mass email, and hope the Linux users respond. With Collide, you have real-time access to your fleet's data. And the best part is instead of installing, and to me anyway, as a user, is instead of installing intrusive agents or locking down devices, which pushes your users, you know, use their own devices, which is a nightmare, right? Collide takes a user-focused approach that communicates with your users over Slack in DMs and gives them 
the advice, the instructions, the security recommendations they need to make themselves secure. And they love it because they're empowered and you're explaining why this is important and they do it and they feel good, they're accomplished and you get the job done a lot easier. You can answer every question you have about your fleet without intruding on your workforce or putting crazy glue in the USB ports. Visit K-O-L-I-D-E, collide.com slash WW to find out how. If you follow that link, they'll hook you up with a goodie bag, including a beautiful Collide t-shirt. They have a couple. This is my favorite, the Pinocchio t-shirt. Honest security. I love that. You also get, you know, a variety of Collide stickers, a Collide uh, coaster for your beer mug. You just activate the free twire. You get all this swag. No credit card needed. K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash W. W. I, I really like it that they offer our, our listeners t-shirts. I think that's great. K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash WW. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Okay, Paul. Okay, I have, highly, I have a highly, highly technical question to ask you. Yes, sir. Is the following sound coming from Discord? It, it sounds like this. Bloop. Yes. <laughs> Is, okay. No, so, no, no, not Discord. Maybe Mastodon. Oh, from Ma oh, that's what it is. Okay, yes. So Mastodon, yes, yes, yes. and this is annoying to people. Yes. Okay. Uh, it, it you can turn those sounds off, but it's not immediately obvious. How it's, to is do it that. next to the English language thing? It's like um, uh, you know that's one of the it's problems. Probably a no notification, maybe. Yeah. So if you create, I'm using the advanced uh, interface. Yeah. I don't know if you are. But when you create columns, among other things in the columns, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's settings uh, for um, yeah at the top, yeah notifications. Yeah, yeah. So I where somewhere yeah, I don't somewhere see it though. Here. Hmm. I don't see it anymore. <laughs> Never mind. They must have changed. I'll just it. I, I'm going to mute the tab for now. But yeah, I, I have literally I I've, I've done everything I can to make. I thought it was my phone. I thought it must be Discord. I thought I muted Discord. I'm just going to mute the site. Yeah, well, and we'll I guess move it's on. The, I guess it's, it's it the seems settings. to be coming out of the yeah. the body of the laptop. It's that bloop. It's, yeah, it's that they have a unique bloop. bloop. Uh, bloop. Notifications must be here now. This is what I get. Like I, I post something right before the show starts, and I'll, I just turn off all these uh, to. notifications. Yeah. I don't mind. I, I want to be notified of you know. Yeah, well, then just turn off your sound. I guess. Yeah, I for the longest time people were complaining. They saying like, what. <laughs> Leo, I keep hearing bloops coming from your show. Yes, yes. That's the worst thing is when they're coming in the show and people don't know that, you know. Right, right. Oh, crud, I just screwed up your logo. It's like, here. you're hearing this, right? It's not just in my head. Okay, uh, okay. Right. Did we do the whole right. FTC thing? Are we done? Yeah, yeah, I think we're done. Now, you've been talking Stupid for a while FTC. about an interesting issue you've been having on those 12th gen Intels. And you no, asked, I still have not reached out to okay. any. You know, I, I asked. I asked publicly. I said, "If any, you know." Yeah. Um, I've gotten some emails from people. You know, I will say one of the things that's gotten lost over the months is the impetus for this, like how it started. I I keep talking about it in the context of browsers, but that's only because that's where the problem is seen the most frequently. So it's an easy thing to find, and you know, all you got to do is load it up with tabs, and you know, you'll see what I'm talking about. But the actual issue is not browsers, right? I think we, you and I talked about this notion that maybe it has something to do with, you know, Windows 11 uh, process scheduling or whatever, but um, which I, I do think it's Windows. I think ultimately it's Windows 11 not being optimized for this new hybrid architecture. I think like, we could just simplify it like that. However, that said, maybe I'm wrong because the way I s saw this in the beginning and still see it is when the laptop is docked, right, to a USB hub, USB-C hub, or a Thunderbolt dock. And the thing... Over time, I've expanded my experience with this happening to multiple computers. And I mean like 15 laptops and then multiple docks. There was a dock inside of an HP conferencing monitor, which is USB-C dock. I have an Anchor USB-C dock. I have a Cal Digit, is that the right name? Uh, Thunderbolt 3 yeah, dock. Yeah, they, they make, actually and that's I have my an, favorite dock. Is the, their, yep, their it's a great dock. dock. Yeah. And I have, a th I have the Thunderbolt 3 version here at home. And in Mexico, I have an HP Thunderbolt 4 dock. And I've experienced this multiple times in all of these docks and hubs. And uh, I just, because people email me and say, yeah, I'm having the same problem with, um, you know, whatever, Chrome. And it's like, okay, it's like, are you using a dock or a hub? Like, no, it's like, well, then you're not really, <laughs> you don't really have the same problem. So, so you think it's finally, dock hub related, not. It is. It's It absolutely is. Because when you don't because have I a dock, really, it doesn't do it. 
That's right. Now, ah, I finally got an email from someone who listened, heard me complain about this. I can't say who he is or where he works, but I do want to read a small part of it or at least paraphrase it uh, because he has seen this exact issue. And this person rolls out PCs for multiple PC makers, always in tandem. And this, these are his words, USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 slash 4 dock. All of the HP Dell and Anchor docks I've tried have had this issue. Uh, he, he notices it in teams. He uses huh. edge and hasn't seen this so much in huh. edge. Um, he, but he did, he had a little bit of data, which is very interesting to me. He says, I noticed when researching this issue that the CPU was down clocking to blow 0.5 gigahertz when the issue happens. And I'm wondering if you, me have used task manager to check if this is happening to me as well. And I haven't. So that's something I'm going to be looking at. Um, he says this person hmm. that Dell appears to have know about this issue because they have released multiple BIOS updates and now the issue appears to be fixed on Dell. Uh -huh. um, yep. Uh -huh. So that's interesting. Now, coincidentally or not, one thing I've noticed because, uh, well, it doesn't matter because I, I review a lot of laptops, um, I, HP laptops, for whatever reason, and I have a bunch of them in the house right now. A lot of firmware updates happening on HP right now. And by firmware, I mean the BIOS part of the firmware, like the, um, uh, and it seems like this might be how a PC maker would fix this. I don't have a lot of experience in this area other than when Microsoft got into the PC market with service, one of the issues that came up was that Microsoft, as an inexperienced PC maker, didn't understand all the problems that hardware makers had with dealing with hardware from Intel or AMD or whatever, like that these things would ship with bugs and that they would be responsible for fixing them on their own machines through firmware updates. So this was the thing where Microsoft had, had that Surface Gate problem I've talked about where Surface Pro 4, especially, no, sorry, Surface Pro 4 to some degree, but Surface Book 1 especially had major issues with coming out of sleep. They would hot bag all the time, remember all that stuff. Microsoft got into such an argument with uh, Intel that they actually dropped support for older chipsets in Windows 10 at the time just to kind of make them mad and demanded that Intel fix this. And Intel said, no, this is your problem. And this was like the sign of immaturity with Microsoft, because they didn't have a lot of experience with PCs. I talked to people from other PC makers. I can't say which ones, but I was told by two different people that they were happy this happened, not because people were hurt by it, but because this would force Microsoft to understand the issue <laughs> and would design Windows better and because they never understood when they came to, you know, to Microsoft and complained, like, we need an easier way to make this happen. They were like, that's a problem for you and Intel or whatever, or you and AMD, whatever it was. And uh, now that this has happened, um, the feeling is maybe Microsoft will have a little more, um, you know, humility and, uh, hmm. I don't know, uh, empathy, <laughs> you know, with regards to this kind of a problem. Anyway, I've someone, uh, I've, listen, I get a lot of email from people like, I think I'm having this and they do or don't, you know, it, it, it I, like I said, it, we've lost track of the, uh, the hub slash doc part of it, which I think is key. This person has seen exactly what I've seen across multiple computers, just like me, multiple PC makers, just like me, multiple dock types, just like me. And I have no, I don't have a Dell dock, but I do. I have tried on two HPs. The anchor is the one I travel with and use all the time. I never had any problems with 12th gen. This thing has been a champ. It's still a champ. I'm using it right now for the show with an AMD based machine. It works great. Um, and there you go. So I'm not saying I, I, I don't, I don't mean to say I've solved it, <laughs> you know, or someone else solved it for me, I guess. Um, but I, I was, I, I just wanted to provide this update because someone has, for all the emails I've gotten about this topic, someone wrote me and I've, I, yes, that's, that, that's it. That's exactly it. That's exactly right. And he's given me a little bit of a, a um, uh, little bit of a trouble shooting step I can take. So I kind of want to force the problem now to, and I will actually, I'm going to, um, just so I can see if I can uh, see this thing in task manager as well. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully yeah. I'm not crazy. I mean, I'm crazy in other ways, but um, at least on this issue, like I said, I've just been kind of blown away. Interesting. By how little I've um, <laughs> seen out in the world of uh, other reviewers, you know, yeah. like it does great in benchmarks. Like that's fantastic. But what's a benchmark? Like, it's like they don't mean? really use it for real work that's one of the things i you know before the show i was saying did you change your your zoom laptop again but i have to say i admire you because yeah. that's one of the ways you test stuff is you use it i and actually use it if right. you don't that's use right. it you're not re you can't really review it that's right you have to during the pandemic one of the things i started doing with laptop reviews was saying look 
my battery life claims here are, are nonsense. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm just not using it on battery in real world conditions anymore. I'm not bringing it with me, putting it in a bag, going someplace, using it over here. I'm not doing what people do. I'm just, I'm sitting at home with it. You know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to come up with anything that's real world. I did a battery life test uh, this year. It might've been, might've been October where until I flew with it, it had gotten whatever the battery life was, which wasn't very good. It was, it was a 16 inch uh, HP Envy, four hours and something, whatever minutes, whatever it was in battery. And I'm like, I'm going to use this thing on the plane. It's not going to make it. The flight's a little <laughs> bit longer than that. And it, it, it was fine. It, there was like 33% left. I'm like, there you go. There's nice, a, nice. It, it, like, oddly enough, like you actually go out in the world with this thing and it acts differently. Because you use it differently. Yeah, nobody like when knows you're home, until they do it. You know, you're you're yeah. within two seconds of a power plug, so you know. That's why I always hate differently. I always hate the the fourteen hours running video benchmark because nobody yep. does that. So that's a lazy I, benchmark because you could just do I'd it. I'd like to say I asked about. I almost I almost said I asked about that. I didn't ask about this. HP. I will say HP said this. So I'll just say HP went on. They actually they always provide this figure and and my rough uh real world uh results at the conclusion of a review is somewhere around half that or even a th as low as a third depending on the computer but what they said was they actually came out and just said they said look we know people don't like this but the reason we do it is because it's an orange to orange comparison so for right. our purposes we can right. do the same test we know it's always the same right. we can run it gen over gen or with competitors right and we can say look this uh, on this one test which is not the whole world and not the way everyone does things it, it, it here's the numbers, you know, and uh, okay, I get it, but you know, I get hey, it. I've uh masked it on Re rehash, I figured it out. Okay, there is a uh, there is a column called notifications, Duh. of course, there is, of course, there <laughs> okay. is. And if you click the yep. little settings icon in the upper right, you can turn on or off yeah. all the okay. sounds, yeah, yep. so there you go, and you can do it. I and you got to be in advance, this is in advance, right? This you is have in, to be advance. in advance, and you can do yep. it per. You know, I you see, I've I've got separate things for all of the different, and you can do it per notifications okay. per type. Oh, there you go. Or you could just revoke permissions to make noise. I don't ever want sounds. I, I turn yeah. off the notification sounds on everything I use. Yeah. Um. I yeah. hate sounds. I go into the first thing I do when when I set up a new browser is I go into content and I turn off the a really annoying thing. Can we can we uh, notify you? I say no. Don't ever allow that. I don't want to see that. They can't. <laughs> right yep <laughs> they can't and they never will because that's a, you if know. you set up a new phone from scratch you'll spend this first four weeks uh retroactively turning off notifications uh, <laughs> you know so annoying. that's what that experience it's all you do that's your, that li your life is, is another thing I, I i when i were doing uh ios today i said mm -hmm. the new phone first thing to do go in notifications turn everything off Just all turn of it them. off <laughs> let's turn it all of off and then, yeah. I mean, I want, you, you want like a phone call probably. Selectively, if it's like a, you can go in. Con calendar uh, notifications, uh, I probably do yeah. one. But that's the thing is uh, most of them you don't. And that's what keeps you from being productive is the right. constant. Oh, the hey, hey that's over right. here. By the way. Oh, hey, I got that's something exactly for you. Right. Oh. That's the, you know, that's why, like, listen, I don't, I have no formal schooling in anything, actually. <laughs> I mean, other than maybe art. And I. I remember being in that Microsoft, the audience at the Microsoft event where they talked about the dual screen things and they were like, dual screens make you more creative. No, they don't. What are you talking <laughs> we're about? Distracted. And, uh, it's just a distraction. Or it's like, um, I, yeah, like the uh, search highlights feature, Windows 11. You, you, you go to search and then there's this thing that's, that's full of information that has nothing to do with you, what you're looking for. And you're like, I, and you look at it. And if you're like me, I don't know what, I mean, if I have ADHD or whatever it is, I've lost track. I've already forgotten why I'm even here. And like, I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> yeah, like that kind of a feature, that's just wrong minded. It's wrong minded because it's there not to make your life better or to help you. It's there to help Microsoft. Right. And it's like, guys, come on. Like, this is just, you can turn it off, you know, thank God. But something that Chad kind of said, stuff, and I've, and I've seen this advice too. Uh, first thing they do when they set up windows is turn off all windows sounds. You said that. Oh, me too. Same thing. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was you who and told by the me way, to do that. it will, yeah, it will come back. That's what makes me crazy. So there are certain cumulative updates and certainly feature updates where you know, I'm using a computer and it's like bump, bump, bump. I'm, I, I turned you off. Like what? Like that's I know. that's our world. I know. What a world we live in, huh? Constant interruption. I guess that's the anyway. first world problem in a nutshell. 
You couldn't have a more first world problem. <laughs> My computer no, the first, keeps the first world problem. You know what a first world problem is? Man, have an airline food choice has gone downhill over the past <laughs> year. What the yeah. hell are you talking? Listen, you're like a like a Greek god flying through the air, and your concern is you can't get a good snack. <laughs> that's, people who've never been on a plane in their entire life. It's that great Louis C.K. I know Louis, you know, yeah, no yeah, longer yeah. a good guy, but th that was a great routine yeah. where he, you know, says, you know, you. He, yeah, he's like, he's like, the message has to. He's like, he's guys complaining because the message hasn't gone through. He's like, it has to beam <laughs> off a satellite in space and go to give it a second. You know, <laughs> Take like, everything for granted. It's a, a beautiful uh, put down. <laughs> it was it's a good beautiful. bit. Yeah, uh, and I'm and I, at your recommendation, I am now installing a bunch of Dell uh, updates, which I did. No, but there you go. See, okay, right. yeah. So maybe this will. And well, I don't. I have. I have an eleventh gen. I haven't had that problem. Uh, oh, oh, eleventh gen. Okay, yeah. And I'm not. Is that true? Doc. I thought you just got this in. Um, oh, are you sure it's eleventh? Oh, you're right. It is a twelfth. I was gonna say I've never seen 12. the problem, but I'm not on a dock unless you include yeah, this, you know, yeah. this little dongle that the. Uh, I guess I am. I mean, this Dell thing is a dock. I guess it's a little dock. Okay, so it I've never tested the, it on that. Comes with the USB dongle so that you can have an yep. HDMI. Port. So what do you have like HDMI, USB, and yep. USB C or something? Yeah, yep. that's exactly that's it. Yep. Um, well, maybe that's what I should be doing. The problem is I, I have too many things. I guess what the other thing I could do is just well, this is AMD, so it's fine. But I could just plug right into the laptop i guess but then it kind of negates the point of no no you need a dock man with a laptop yeah the one you, you want dock, one, cable, one cable one cable one cable man we'll get uh, there gumby saying gonna good move leo update your vendor drivers in the middle of a show <laughs> yeah sure that's hey as long as the laptop's not running the show we'll be fine <laughs> i have done it even when a laptop is running the show that's the set yep yep all right little break for a word from nord layer our sponsor for this <laughs> portion of the show nord layer is a really great solution for any business that kind of wants in just a few minutes to safeguard your network your data and who doesn't i mean the surging ransomware attacks employees working remotely business networks are more vulnerable than ever before nord layer i know you know the name n-o-r-d nord layer secures and protects remote workforces but it also protects your business data. It can even help you ensure security compliance. And it is easy to get started. 10 minutes to onboard your whole business on a secure network. That's how easy it is. It's easy to add new members, create teams. You can have private gateways, even do things like IP allow listing. That's going to help you immensely, right? Site-to-site -site connection. Network segmentation, setting up secure network access. It, it, it is a very powerful system. You want to get one month free right now, you go to nordlayer.com slash twit. You'll get one month free with the purchase of an annual subscription. N-O-R-D-L-A-Y-E-R, nordlayer.com slash twit. Also, because it's hardware free and it's compatible with all major operating systems, it's easy to combine it with all your other, you know, security and so forth. Uh, it, you can implement security features across all your teams. It uh, has features like two-factor authentication, single sign-on, biometrics. You want to have, you know, you want to lock uh, authentication down. It does all that. Threat block, smart remote access, does all that. NordLayer is easy to scale. You can choose a plan unique to your business requirements and your rate of growth. You'll have everything centrally in one place where you can check server usage, monitor connections to your gateways, View the activity log. One Nord Layer user said, quote, we were looking for an easy way to securely connect our remote workforce to our infrastructure. This is it. Awesomely quick, friendly, and efficient support. Got this up and running in no time. You know, there's there often are two different kind of categories of people who want to do this. They'll either go to the free solutions and, you know, free, you get what you get. <laughs> it's not very good. And it's often insecure. Or they go to a big elaborate, expensive solution nord layer is easy to implement price is right scales with you gets the job done it's, ju it's just the what you want most modern businesses these days are already adopting network network solutions like sassy and zero trust and hybrid work security nord layer gives it to you all of it don't leave your business vulnerable try nord layer today join more than seven thousand fully protected organizations easy to set up easy to monitor and it scales with you. It's a great solution. NordLayer. If you want to secure your business network, go to nordlayer.com slash twit. First month free when buying an annual subscription. NordLayer.com slash twit.
Thank you, Nordlayer, for supporting Polly and the Windows Weekly Programmy. On we go with the show. Let's see what's next. Uh, oh, we have we haven't even talked about Windows yet. I know. Holy cow! <laughs> Over an hour into the show, um, time for Windows. I, I, look, uh, one thing people should understand: it's mid December. Uh, this is when Microsoft starts shutting down. <laughs> so, um, you know, the Windows stuff is coming. Well, actually, we have some. We do have some news here. I guess there's some. There's some stuff. So there's a little bit of stuff. Yeah, since our last show, there have been two dev channel builds of Windows 11. I think, I, I, I can, I'm not going to go look, but I don't think there was a dev channel build prior to that for last week's show. So the one we got today uh, was just Microsoft experimenting more with uh, how they're going to handle search in the taskbar. So they have a version that looks like the Windows 10 version where it's long and you see that little search highlight graphic at the end. And then they have the pill. They're going to start, you know, I, they're experimenting with this in stable. So, uh, you know, whatever. Um, this build is the final dev channel build of 2022, they said. So we'll have to wait until January for a new dev channel build. Um, but there was one last week. And this this is kind of interesting. This is a, like a, as far as like figuring out, like, why would they do this? Right. So uh, Microsoft or Windows 11 has a new interface called Widgets, which is based on an interface in Windows 10 that was called, what was it called? News and something news and information news and i don't know what it was uh but it's similar ui right prettier right it's windows 11. um to see this thing though you need to sign into a microsoft account today right which is kind of interesting so most people sign into windows 11 with a microsoft account and if so this thing is auto populated you'll have your local weather local news etc uh, however starting in the dev channel um, they have turned off this. So now what you will get is your local weather if location services are turned on. Uh, you can still configure widgets if you want that are specific to certain account type stuff, if that's what you want. Um, and you'll have a news feed, right? But you don't have to sign into your Microsoft account. That's kind of interesting. So why would they do that? And actually, I think that the reason this is kind of cynical, but I think the reason is um, this is the gateway to Microsoft online services like MSN and Bing and their ad engine. And if they don't let you get to it because you decided you don't want to sign in with your Microsoft account, that means that stuff's not getting fed and they want that stuff to get fed more than they want you to sign into a Microsoft account. That's my theory. It's speculation, but that's an idea. And that's about it for those two builds. So not too, too much. Um, there are two other things happening in the dev channel though. So current, current with last week's build, Microsoft revealed that there was a new version of the media player app, which is that kind of modern app replacement for what used to be groove music and what used to be Xbox music for that. Um, I don't feel like anyone really uses this app, so I don't, it's not it was like whatever. Um, but separately, they announced and this one, they actually made an announcement, like a separate announcement. They didn't put it in a build announcement. Um, there is a new version of the snipping tool available to people in the dev channel that adds screen recording functionality. So today uh, in stable snipping tool is a screenshot app and it's pretty full featured you could say full screen particular app select an area etc um, but they're going to allow you to do that but with screen recording as well and that's actually i don't think it's a thing like a lot of people need but it is a thing that should be part of the operating system so that's actually kind of a nice little addition so that has happened um get rid of that look at me closing tabs because i'm using an amd machine it's not <laughs> hanging it's so nice it's, it's so modern it's nice um this just happened today i want to thank uh, neo Win for pointing this out i don't know when i would have found it because microsoft never announced this but without any testing whatsoever in the insider program microsoft today is rolling out a new version of onedrive to windows 11 and this new version of onedrive has a windows 11 style ui which i know doesn't sound like much but if you don't have it already, what you'll see if you click on the OneDrive icon is a, a little kind of um, control panel type window, right? Like what we used to, like a, almost like a property sheet. This is something that dates back to like, I don't know, Windows 2000, maybe? <laughs> like it's a really old looking UI. I know OneDrive isn't that old, but I mean, this style of UI is very old. And now what they do when you go into settings is you actually get a nice Windows 11 style window with the rounded corners and it's, you know, themed to what you have. Um, and they've done the same thing for sub windows. So if you uh, want to set up like a folder sync or choose which folders to sync or no, you know, all that stuff, those sub windows are all modern. Now they're not the old style, which is cool. Um, hidden in here, by the way, is a new feature. So in windows 11 through today, 
Uh, you could use OneDrive to back up your uh, desktop, your documents, and your pictures, right? So in effect, in the file system, replacing those physical locations on disk with a location in OneDrive so that it would sync to OneDrive and then you could access the same stuff on every computer. Um, I actually turned that off, but I could see where this is a very useful feature for people. In this new version of OneDrive, you can also sync your music and videos folders, which I always kind of wondered why you couldn't do that. So now you can. I have to think they're going to make an announcement about this uh, today or tomorrow or something. I can't believe this this dropped on us with no warning whatsoever, um, but it's here. So <laughs> enjoy it. Um, I don't know. How, oh, by the way, I should say, I don't know how you get it. So I have it on this computer that I'm using here. Oh, it's gone, but I had a computer back there. I was testing earlier. I don't have it on another computer. I've only had a chance to test those two computers. Um, I updated Windows Update. I updated the apps. I don't, you know, Microsoft has different ways of updating different parts of Windows now. So this might be something they just flip a switch on the back. I have no idea how they do it. So they're both on the same build, all that stuff. I don't know. Um, speaking of the same build, uh, Tuesday was Patch Tuesday. And I don't usually talk about Patch Tuesday. But actually, there's a couple of new features, um, which we've seen tested in, uh, in where, Paul? In the Insider program. And actually, this, uh, this stuff appeared last month in a preview update. Remember, week C is not, is, or week E is a lie. This is the stuff from week E, <laughs> right? So um, this is the uh, storage alerts for OneDrive subscribers, the integration of Windows Spotlight into themes on uh, personalization settings, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's, that went public. So this is, I don't know if this is a mini moment or whatever you want to call it, but it is a uh, a functional addition that appeared in what should be a security and bug fix update. But that's, you know, again, Microsoft, they, uh, they like to update. And finally, uh, Microsoft announced this past week that um, with the release of Microsoft Edge version 108, which I think we talked about last week, no new features for end users, right? Uh, in four weeks, Edge 109 will come out. That will be the last version to support Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. And, and also uh, the last version where the WebView 2 that's associated with uh, the runtime that's associated with Microsoft Edge will also be the last version supported on those platforms. And then starting with version 110, which I guess by this point might be early February, I can't remember the exact date, um, Microsoft Edge going forward will only be supported on Windows 10 and Windows 11. So. There you go. Um, if you are wondering why that would be, uh, Windows 7 and Windows 8 are both being put out to pasture in January. I think January 10th, and um, or you know, that might that might not be the exact date, but Windows 7 is now at the end of its three-year extended support policy thing. Remember, and Windows 8 one is just at the end of 10 years. So this is happening in January. Edge is going to go out of support. We'll see if they step back from that cliff, but that's the plan for now. Put out to pasture. What a nice way of putting yeah. it. They'll be in the chasing rabbits in the, in the bliss world, <laughs> chasing rabbits. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. Leo, if I asked you, what do you think the biggest problem with OneNote for Windows is? <laughs> what would you guess? <laughs> you had to guess. The biggest problem. Yeah. If OneNote, if OneNote had one problem for Windows, what would it be? I would say collaboration. <laughs> actually, it's a good guess. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I would say too. Actually, I would add things like, um, multiple versions of the app which is confusing yeah that's uh, going very back confusing. and forth yeah, yeah 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 well they're going to fix what they say is the single biggest request oh, for good. one note yeah. is uh, they're going to add vertical tabs oh lord yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i i just oh lord yikes so there you go that's vertical it huh? tabs. That's vertical it. tabs they're here baby you've been waiting for them you've been begging for them they're finally here I hope to never speak of this product again. <laughs> but the only reason I say up. collaboration is because I remember how uh, hard it was for you and Mary Jo uh, and how many issues oh, you, we had. Yeah, you can't say we out. didn't give it a try. Oh, I'm not going to bring up the app to find out. Years. We used that thing for like yeah, at least 10 years, right? 10 years you gave it a 10 try. 10 years. Yep. So, you know, roughly 50 shows a year. What is that? 500? 500 shows. And, it now, and as soon as you went to Notion, you know, it was like yep, all the no pain problems. went away. Just went away. Yep. I've never had a problem with this on Notion. I mean, it, one advantage that Notion has is you're it's a web app. So you're you're working That's on right. the same database as opposed no, no, to yeah. having yep. two different yep. sets of data that you have to somehow I communicate. Agree. I, I 
I, yeah, one note is a victim of the time in which it was made, I guess. Um, hey, I get use, it. user 5874 is asking a good question. What, have you heard anything mm -hmm. more about Loop? No, no. So the last we heard was at Ignite. And at that time, we were hoping for, you know, we've been hoping for big news about Loop for the past, I don't know, four or five major Microsoft shows. The only thing they said, and it was like the smallest announcement, was that Loop would be in a private preview with certain, you know, sort of like the Microsoft used to have some, well, probably still has something called the TAP program, right? The tech, uh, what was it called? Technology Access? Advanced Preview advanced or Access Preview, preview something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, it was, it, it sort of reminded me of that. It's like, we're going to go, we're going to try this with a certain small subset of companies and then we're going to start going wider on it. The speculation we had at the time was that this is probably a, a tough bit of computer science. You know, they might've bit off more than they could chew. Um, I think it's still going to happen, but no, it's not something you can just go get and, uh, and try for yourself. Not yet. You know, so. uh, I don't, I don't, I doubt you care. But Apple, uh, because Apple takes off yeah. the holidays. No, I do care. They updated everything no. uh, yesterday. Yeah. And mm -hmm. one of the things uh, that we all got, whether you're on iPad OS or, uh, right. or iOS mm -hmm. or, um, or Mac OS, is this new Freeform app, which yeah. I thought initially I mean, might be a little like Loop, but it's really just a I whiteboard. I thought so, too. Yeah. It's just a whiteboard, yeah. It does so, have collaboration. You know, um, Listen, uh, is you two going to have to write an apology because they just dumped this on everyone's device, or how does that work? <laughs> I know everybody got <laughs> it. We all just it's got like, this new app. We it's were afraid cool. that when you buy a new iPhone, we only have we have like almost two full screens of icons. So now we have like two full screens. Like we wanted to get that last space filled up with our own icons. I yeah. guess I don't know. It so I thought the same thing. The only reason I looked at this is I thought this is their notion interesting it's, it's not, not going to help me notion. because you know there's no, no there's no web or windows version it's a, and it's a collaborative whiteboard that's what yep. it is no, yeah, that's okay that's fine they should have one of those that's fine windows has one i'm Do sure they, there are what, third party. what does yeah. windows have for a whiteboard oh you're gonna love the imaginative name it's called whiteboard <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah so if you just bring up your start menu and type in whiteboard oh, you'll see this microsoft whiteboard application. okay yep. is it collaborative can i can i share yes whiteboard? it is in fact this app, this app is based on the app that first shipped with the surface studio um oh, so yeah, yeah, the yeah. idea there is you'd have multiple people standing there whiteboarding away um you could do this uh, with other people online i don't have well. it on so my have... uh, my machine you don't no oh oh i am shocked well, I have it on mine, but it's uh, you can get it from the store if you don't have it. Yes, Microsoft it must whiteboard. be in the store. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it, I'm pretty sure it comes with Windows. I don't know why. I wouldn't have erased it. Yeah, whiteboard.microsoft.com, and it has a web interface, which is nice. Yeah, I wonder if this is something like a PC maker can. Well, I don't. Hmm. I thought it was part of Windows. I'm not sure. You know what? This is this is very similar to what Apple's doing. <laughs> That's almost exactly the same. Well, you know, if you're claiming that Microsoft has ripped off Apple, I can <laughs> no, tell no, you other way around, other way around. <laughs> so I think no, you have I, to install it from the store because I, I don't. Uh, okay, I don't, I'm not sure what to say to that, but yeah. uh, but you can, you can, of course, get it from the store. It's um, so funny, Doug M, who is a devoted Windows user and a regular in our chat, says, "I've never heard of whiteboard." <laughs> Really? Well, he says I got it, but I never heard of it. So I don't know yeah. why I don't have it on mine. I don't think I, I erased listen. Everyone it. who goes in a hospital says that statement. I've never heard of it, but <laughs> I never I, heard I of it, but I got it. it. <laughs> Microsoft yep. whiteboard. All right, I'm installing it. Yeah, it's collaborative digital canvas in Microsoft 365. Do you think yep. it came with Office? That's why you have it. No, no, it's it's a Windows huh. thing. Ah, it's weird that I didn't get it. I feel left out. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. I don't, uh, maybe it's something Dell could nix. Maybe it's one of the optional off. things yeah. or something. Maybe it's very. I mean, just on the surface, it looks very similar to what Apple's doing with Freeform. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Well, that funny. look, I I I don't uh, begrudge Apple making a whiteboarding app. It's fine. I think every platform oh, should have something should. like this. It's collaborative. This is the hybrid you can do work your mood yep. boards yep. with somebody else or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I mean, I, there's only so many ways you can do a whiteboard. It's literally a whiteboard. <laughs> you know, that's the name. It's you can the, embed, but you can put video on this and photos, text, sticky mm -hmm. notes. That's all the same, right? See, I feel like what's yeah. Loop's going to have a similar thing, but it but a much more broader variety of components. You probably have a spreadsheet component, for instance, or stuff like that. I think that. the... Yeah, the central confusion about Loop is going to be that there are going to be Loop components you could use in other apps, probably including Whiteboard at some point. 
although I don't think that's on the list right now. And then you can also run an app called Loop where you can have your Loop components. But some of those components can be things that bring in things like Excel spreadsheets, Word right. documents, that's one cool. note, notes, you know, et cetera. Yeah. So you could imagine there being a whiteboard inside of a, a Loop document with other content and that that whiteboard comes from Microsoft Whiteboard. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. a two-way street, Leo. I downloaded a whiteboard and I'm opening it right now. Microsoft respects your privacy. So, okay, right. that's all I can, right, right, that's right. all it says. It doesn't actually give you any choices. <laughs> it's just, but they do respect your privacy. It's a banner. We, we, we don't protect it, no, but, but we, we respect do respect it. it. Yeah. We get it. We get that you care about it. Yeah. But yeah. does it have vertical tabs? That's all. I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't think it has any tabs. I don't, yeah. yeah. Um, authenticator. Oh, right. I forgot about the authenticators. This is actually something I use uh, not every day, but almost every day because I have an Apple Watch, right? So um, obviously, obviously, people in the Microsoft space have probably heard of Microsoft Authenticator. One of the wonderful things about your Microsoft account is that you can sign in on a new PC or elsewhere and not have to ever type your password. Um, they send a code to the thing, Woo, you okay it, you that. authenticate, love however that. you do it, and off you go. It's nice. If you have an Apple Watch, yeah, you can do that on your watch, so right? Cool. And so you look at your watch, as you say approve, it will approve. say there's a number on the screen, you type yeah. in the right number and you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's going away. So oh. <laughs> I think by the end of the month, you're not going to be able to do that. I anymore. use it all the time. Why would they take that off? I know. Because it's, it, <laughs> so that's actually confusing. Their description, uh, the Microsoft's explanation says that the Apple Watch, let me see if I can find this exactly. Yeah, is incompatible with authenticator security features. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. This thing's been around for five years. Um, it works great. I, you have to, I, here's my guess is cause actually I would never have guessed this, but right now I am testing a Google pixel watch, right? A Google, sorry, Google pixel phone, yeah. which means I'm wearing an iPhone and I, uh, Jesus, I can't, I can't speak. I'm wearing an Apple watch, but it's not connected to that phone, right? It only connects to an iPhone. So the iPhone's out in the kitchen. It's connected to Wi-Fi, whatever. Technically, you're supposed to sign in, hopefully biometrically, but pin on a mobile device as step one of approving an authentication request through Microsoft Authenticator. But if you think about it, I have given this watch permission to unlock my phone and do other yeah. things. Yeah. It's passing through this notification from the iPhone. Yeah. I'm not signed into my iPhone. <laughs> I have not. I've done nothing. I guess. Well, I, okay. Arguably, no, 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 I have, no, no, no. Because I have typed in a pin. I have typed in. Yeah, a pin. your Apple Watch will not uh, unlock just, unless you either unlock it directly or. That's true. Okay, your it's phone. a pin. Okay, so I. So at me, some point, there's be, a handshake that says, "Yeah, that's, that's right. your watch," and as that's long right. as it stays yeah. on your wrist, that's you. Mm -hmm. So that's why this works. But maybe Microsoft doesn't think that's sufficient. I don't I, know. I'm thinking they don't think that's sufficient. I I don't see the language anywhere where it says. Hey, by the way, we're not going to support pins anymore. I would imagine that the vast majority, or at least a huge percentage of people that use any mobile device, device are probably using pins, right? So um, Apple's two-factor, of course, they're not going to take it off their own watch, but that's, you double tap yeah. and that's, you can two-factor on the watch as well. Yep. So it's weird I, that Microsoft- I like using hmm. the watch for this. Oh, and yeah. I am, oh, yeah. I am a little surprised by this. And so I, have, I, I don't know. I have two accounts on my authenticator on my watch. So I have- Oh, on your watch. I I mean, I have multiple accounts in, uh, including. Um, you have more than one for, MSA? Um, no, I do. But I also have other accounts in there. So I have a Microsoft commercial account. Oh. I actually put the uh, the Mastodon uh, Twitch social accounts oh. in there because it generates a code, right? I should have um, done that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I've been using Authy. But I could use yeah, same Microsoft thing. Authenticator. Well, but it's not, not going to work on the watch anymore. But now it won't work on the watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. Why. I, I don't feel like. Anybody have a suggestion I've... for an, another authenticator app that will? Will Google's work on the watch? I don't know, because that is a very that's yeah. so convenient. Yeah. Because I don't have to go get my phone. I got my. I always have my watch on. Well, I you just... know, like, sometimes on the Apple Watch you'll get a, a notification for something. You're like, nice. I'll be able to, you know, okay this here. And it's like uh, open the app on your iPhone. You're like, okay, whatever. But the uh, the authenticator. Has, has worked and it does it passes through the information you need to okay it right if you get three different numbers or whatever um i really like it i i to me it's not it seems secure but of course i'd say that i'm an idiot so, so <laughs> I'm, I'm searching for authenticator that works with apple watch and of course it's everybody says oh yeah microsoft authenticator right it works with the, the apple watch too bad so 
uh, it's possible a future Apple or I guess a watchOS update or something will add some security support, something, something that will make this come back or something. I don't know. It's too bad. Yeah, because if it works up great. the number, that's really secure. But you're saying they're getting rid of that number thing. So that's no, no, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. Well, I, they're I, not. I, no, they're not getting rid of it. But I, I don't I guess what I'm saying is I don't know why this doesn't qualify. I was originally saying, you know, I'm not really signed into the you know the like i don't know how apple watch apps work exactly but no you this are apps really, it's, it's authenticated it's if you took that phone. watch off it wouldn't work the authenticator wouldn't do it it has to be no no i get that yeah i get that yeah, yeah. that's what I, I was kind of forgetting but i yeah you have to you type in a, you type a pin in seems like a pin would do it it does do it today i don't know yeah i don't know i don't know i'm doing the whatever emoji <laughs> exactly <laughs> um <sighs> yeah, Where's the ASCII art when you need it? <sighs> Still haven't learned how to do that. I just cut and paste it every time. I know. I don't. Every time I see it, I get upset. <laughs> it's a lot of characters. Like, does, are you actually typing that? There's a lot of characters. It's, it's impressive. Uh, let's talk <laughs> about this. Is the yeah. strangest story I've ever heard. Your next. Story. I would have. Yeah, this would have been a Mary Jo thing. I would have sat back and not really paid attention to this. So I don't even get this it. What, this one hurts my head. So when I re remember, this is what the thing Mary Jo would have appreciated is um, there was a period of time that might still be doing it where Microsoft would reveal customer wins, at, but call them partnerships, right? We are partnering right. with, you know, oh, Fidelity. Oh, right. Out, so I thought, for a second, I thought this, this might be, that must be what this is. Yeah. It's not what it, because the opening sentence is, uh, the London Stock Exchange has agreed to spend $2.8 billion on Azure and other Microsoft products. You're like, oh, oh there you go. It's a partnership. Nope. No, okay. no, but it is a part. It's actually a partnership. So as part of this strategic partnership, Microsoft will also acquire 4% of the London Stock Exchange group. You're like, what? <laughs> what is, what? I, so what? I don't, what? I don't, what? I, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I don't know how, I mean, is the London Stock Exchange Group listed on the London Stock Exchange? <laughs> if so, they must be a public company and maybe this is considered an investment. And so they own a small part of it. And that's what they had to do to get them to agree to go with Azure instead of, say, AWS or something. I I, I have no idea. So it's like money's exchanging hands. I don't know how much a 4.4% uh, acquisition or a yeah 4% acquisition of the London Stock Exchange Group costs. You know, is it? Less than two point eight billion dollars, probably. Um, it could generate an additional five billion in revenue over the next ten years. Um, you know, if things go well, I guess. I I, why would I don't know? I don't know. This is outside of my. It was just. Um, I felt like I couldn't not mention it, but I. <laughs> That's weird. Did, did, well, it's just yeah. a, you know what this diversification is just an it's an investment, right? There you go. Sure. What are you going to do? Sometimes, <laughs> sure. Sometimes you invest. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. I don't get it. And then uh, this is, of course, related to that story. Um, Microsoft, as you know, has two generations of the Surface Duo, and they just released their December 2022 uh, software update for those both platforms. And um, one of the big things there, if you have a Surface Duo 2, is it fixes the phone calling issues. Mm. Uh, that have occurred since that, I think it was like an October software update that brought it up to Android 12L, which is the the big screen, two screen, you know, update uh, of Android uh, that they did last year. Or no, I'm sorry, they did it early this year. Um, I guess it's not a phone, so I don't see why this would have been a problem for anybody. But uh, we were talking uh, on Twit on Sunday about how great Windows Phone was, and I wish yeah. it would come back. We need the competition. Um, yeah, that's sure Microsoft it's, wishes it would come back too. That's like saying, you know, I really miss the Roman Empire. That was great. <laughs> they should bring that back. Those are the days. Times have changed. I, you know, yeah. that's the problem. I, I, there was a moment in time. It could have been a couple of years where they were kind of firing on. They, well, they were firing on all cylinders, but it was also a new platform, so they had those kind of issues. Right. Uh, but they were ahead of Google and uh, Apple in key areas. Um, the the camera was incredible on those nokia high-end devices especially the lumia 1020 yeah um, yeah and they were well made and yep uh i had a, i had one i i don't know why i was in i think it was boston subway i, I reached i jumped up and grabbed a girder in the subway <laughs> and my phone fell out of my Aww. pocket lumia 
hit the ground, cracked open like a lobster. It made this horrible cracking sound. I could see all of the insides of it. And I, I, I just like, I pushed it back together. It was like, and then it was, it was fine. Uh, Absolutely fine. Wow. It had, it had no problems whatsoever. Yeah. Wow. They were really well, they were wow. well made. And, um, you know, the polycarbonate thing, the unibody, beautiful. But I agree. I, agree. I mean, I, obviously I was, I was intimately involved with that whole thing. I loved it, but, um, you know, the world has changed so much and, and the advantages it had, I think have been superseded since then. I mean, I know the, the market today is not perfect. We, <laughs> we just talked a lot about Apple today in particular, but neither Android or iPhone is, is perfect, of course, but I don't know. The, the camera capabilities we have today are just next level, you know, compared to what we could do back then. True, um, true. They invented the camera bump, though. Let's not forget. No, yeah, they invented it, did they? <laughs> well. It made it look like a camera. It had you know? a big bump. <laughs> yeah, they did a nice job with that. Because it had a 41 megapixel camera, which at the time was like. Slower than crap, though. It, it could take beautiful photos, but my God, you had to hold that thing still. Yeah. Like um, you were not catching running people doing anything with that. It was so slow. Yeah. So, All right, so. we kind of talked a little bit about the Xbox at the beginning of the show, but you know what? Because there's no Mary Jo Foley, you have full reign to talk about <laughs> Xbox all you want. Yeah. Uh, so let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. There isn't, there, there isn't too much. Um, in fact, I don't even know if we wrote, I don't know if we wrote up any of these, like on the site. These are all kind of little, uh, yeah, these are all tidbits. direct from Xbox. Little, little, yeah, tidbits. Little uh, moose bouche for the back of the book. Just a little something to... Get you in yeah. the mood. There you go. So uh Riot Games, which I think makes a League of Legends is probably their big game, Valorant. Yep. Uh those those games are now available to Game Pass members, which is kind of cool. Um, not quite the Activision Blizzard thing we were hoping to announce, but uh, you know, some good games there. So that's good. Um, this one makes no sense to me, but it's hilarious. Um Microsoft is offering a three-month trial of Com Premium for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. I haven't looked this up because it's just going to upset me. It's possible anyone could get a three-month trial premium, uh, uh, three-month trial of Com Premium. I don't know. Uh, Com is a an online service with mobile apps for meditation and sleep. And it's an interesting juxtaposition between X Pass Game, yeah. pa Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and Calm. Yeah, just uh, kill people for a couple hours and, and go meditate. to bed to the, the soothing sounds of meditation. Yeah, it's like a, a balance kind of a thing. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Um, I I tried Calm for a little while. I'm not um, not what we call a calm person, but I um, I like the idea of it. It's just not for me. Yeah. Come. And then <laughs> the other one was just a, you know, it was any of your recap pieces. So um, when Windows, let's see if I think I get through this exactly. When Windows 10 debuted, there were two Xbox apps, right? There was the Xbox, what, be, what became the Xbox console companion, I think was the name of it. And then there was something called smart screen. And smart screen was a way that you could have like second uh, screen experiences. Um, if you had like, we're doing something on your Xbox and you had like a tablet, you know, hopefully a surface or something. Uh, there were some TV shows that offered these experiences. You could do things like, you know, stream games and stuff like that. Um, flash forward to windows 11. Those are both gone. Basically they're still at the store. Um, and there's a new Xbox app on windows 11 and the Xbox app is not a replacement for those other apps. It's something else. This is an app for game pass, right? So the idea here is Sign up with your Microsoft account. You get access to the library. You can manage downloads. You can launch games through there. You don't have to. They're out, you know, in the start menu, desktop, whatever. Um, the big complaint about the uh, Xbox app, the new Xbox app, is that it was really slow. <laughs> so uh, this year they made a bunch of improvements, UI, et cetera. But one of the big things that it was performance related. One of the things I'd like is some of that other functionality. Because one of the things I do is I take screenshots or, or um recordings in games on an Xbox. And I'd like to get those on my PC and that should be in the Xbox app. I don't quite understand why that's not the case. So I actually download the, um, uh, what's it called? The Xbox companion app, which you can get in store, like I said, um, and do that, do it that way. But it's like, I, I kind of wish there was one Xbox, you know, app on windows that did everything, but to my note, to my Knowledge there is not. It also is a client for Xbox Cloud Gaming. So if you have the ultimate subscription, you can get that through there. Nice. That's all I got. That's well, all. that was easy. 
Here I was bracing myself for a challenging no, things are half slowing hour down, you know? of Xbox news. Well, we did it all at the top of the hour is what we did. Well, that was the big one, of course, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, as far as, like, uh, new games coming to Xbox Game Pass, you know, yada, 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 I think we're kind of hitting the <laughs> at the end of that yeah. for, for this month. Well, yeah. you know where else you're not going to get any uh, extensive Xbox news? I don't think our sponsor, Red Hat's Code Comments podcast. I don't think, I don't think there'll be a lot of Xbox in there. Actually, Code Comments is a really cool idea. You know when you're when you're working on code, if you're a coder, you write comments in the code. I do. I write a lot of comments. I may be a little wordy. Add, you know, one plus one, add comment, add one. That's probably not necessary. But the idea is you're going to annotate what you're doing so that someone else can look at it and know what you were up to. Or more importantly, so that you, a year later, the new person that you are can look at it and go, oh, oh is that what I... Anyway, a small reminder... To help others learn from your work is a good way to put it. The idea of Code Comments, the podcast, the original podcast from Red Hat, is it takes you listening in on two experienced technologists as they comment on the process of taking an idea to market, on the building process. It takes a lot of work to start on that whiteboard, you know, your Microsoft whiteboard and sketching it out to get it all the way to market. No one does it by themselves. That's why you got to have code comments, right? The host is great, Burr Sutter. He's a red hatter. He knows his stuff. In fact, he's he's been a lifelong developer, advocate, community organizer. So what he's doing is he's bringing in technologists from all over the world to talk about how they work and to trade stories and talk about what they've learned from their experiences. It's a great way for you to learn uh, from their experiences as well. You can you can find this at redhat.com, redhat.com slash code comment podcasts, uh, original podcast from Red Hat. Let me just see how many they've got out. I've subscribed, and you should just subscribe it, but you can always go to the, uh, the, the, the website and see the show. The latest episode, Avoid Failure in Distributed Databases. <laughs> ben Darnell of Cockroach Labs talks about how they built their database to survive almost anything that's awesome deep learning rethinking networks and telecommunications how to align with open principles all of this uh kind of grist for the mill with burr um in the uh in episode four uh, ben says the first code i wrote for cockroach db was actually an implementation of raft in that week, I was able to implement probably the first 80% of the Raft algorithm. Then it turns out we spent upwards of the next year working on what I'd say is the next 20%. Yeah, that sounds about right. First 80 is easy. Uh, what a great show to listen to. The Code Comments podcast from Red Hat. I invite you to check it out. You can go to, as I said, redhat.com slash Code Comments podcast. Uh, you can look for code comments in your podcast player. You can also go to our show notes at twit.tv slash WW. We'll have a link on uh, this episode. Thanks so much to Code Comments uh, and Red Hat for supporting us. We like to support podcasts, uh, and they support us. So that's a nice thing to do. Thank you, Red Hat. Uh, Paul, now would be a good time. <laughs> now okay. would be a good time to start the back of the book. And as always with the back of the book. It's your tip of the week to kick things off. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this conversation, but several months ago, excuse me, uh, Mary Jo was pointing out that she had these like pop-up yes. text things yes. that would appear in Notepad, right? And I've never seen this before. It's in so. our best of show. <laughs> okay. It was confusing. I did remember So that. yes. Flash forward some number of months, whatever it is, and I'm working on the Windows 11 field guide and I've gotten to kind of going back and forth, but I've been writing the the hardware section, the devices section, and um, trying to come up with anything to write about, like keyboards, mice, and touchpads is beyond my skills, but I'm trying. And um, it's weird because uh, mice and touchpads and things like printers and scanners and whatever else are all managed in the settings app in Bluetooth and devices, right? All the hardware components in your computer, but keyboard keyboards are not. <laughs> Like, why would that be? Well, there's somewhere else. So if you go into settings and go to time and language, you'll see that there's a typing section, typing page, and some of it's related to the touch keyboard, like if you have a tablet or a two-in-one PC or whatever. But a couple of these options are not. These are just general keyboard settings. And I guess it's in time and language because a keyboard by nature would be 
defined to a language, right? You have yeah. a U.S. keyboard. You have a, you know, I know. Yeah. I, I'm not. It's, it's a I'm regional actually, setting, I guess. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes I, sense. Yeah, I don't like it either. Yeah. I, honestly, there should be a keyboard thing in the other place, yes. and it should link to this. I don't know. Yes. They, they do that with other things, you know, whatever. But okay. But this is where you turn off. The, this is where you turn on that feature. So one of the options here is show text suggestions when typing on the physical keyboard. And if you turn it on, you will get those little pop up things. That's what that is. And uh, it works pretty well. I have to say, I turned I turned it on, then turned it off because I found it to be annoying. I type really fast. So there's always these little windows coming up, you know, as I type. But um, one of the neat things that is associated with it is if you have configured your computer to support multiple languages, maybe because you speak two languages or you do business with another country that speaks a different language, uh, which is one of those things you can do in Windows and elsewhere. Um, it will actually support multilingual text suggestions as well. So if you configure this thing for English and Spanish or whatever, you'll get uh, text suggestions in the other language as well. So I thought that was kind of cool. So good. Plus mystery solved. I don't remember if we solved it at the time, but I don't think we did. So it's good to know. Yes. Yeah. So that's where it is. It, it's right. in the book or no, I'm sorry. It will be in the book. Um, <laughs> that part's not made it public yet, but um, yeah, don't hold your breath. I wrote a tip about it. If you want to see it, but. <laughs> It's not, it's not going to sell any copies of the book for that. Oh, hey, finally. Oh, wow. Someone that's finally awesome. wrote up the keyboard situation. Um, Actually, yep. it's hysterical because that's in the best of, which is which is great. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Good. Um, <clears throat> the other. Oh, so oh, oh, Epic. So I have two Epics. Um, uh, one is uh, both of these are things I've actually recommended in the past, but um, both have uh, come to the forefront again for different reasons. Um, I've spent a lot of time recently, as I do from time to time, trying to find a markdown editor for writing that I really like. I almost, I was like this close. And there's a part of me that really wants to do this. Went down the Visual Studio code path, right? Because Visual Studio code uh, oh, supports markdown yeah, but natively. No. But oh, that's a bad idea. I, I know. But you know, you can download extensions that make it better for writing and blah, 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 whatever. It's a little too, you know, Cody. code editor. Yeah, it's yeah. Cody. I mean, I kind of like that part of it, but it's uh, yeah. so I like VS Code a lot. I can't imagine writing it. Yeah, and I guess you I, know. I can't, so I, I'll just say this: the, the reason what, the reason I almost went with it was because the the thing I've been using for the book and will continue to use for the book is an app called Markdown Pad Two, which is not supported anymore, and that's actually part of the reason I want to replace it because I have to install a very specific developer library. I have I have to hold these things. I don't know if they'll always be available online. Um, I, that will install a very specific version and I'm talking like a, it might even be, it's at least 10 year old version of some visual C plus plus library. It's a crazy, it's, it's just an old app, but the thing I like about it is it does the side by side view hundred percent of the time. So you write in code over here and you see what it looks like in a preview pane over here, which I really like. Oh, I do like that. Yeah. I mean, it takes up a lot of yeah, screen so, space, but if you have a big screen, that's yeah, definitely the way it's to just, go. Yeah. I, it's, I'm just used to it. Um, Visual Studio Code supports that, but you have to turn it on every time unless I'm missing something. I that, that you can do it, but it, you have to turn it on. But there's actually there's uh, the app I'm I'm going to use for writing, not for the book though, because for that code reason is called Typora, and it's been around for a while. You have to pay for it; it's worth it. It's, I think it's maybe fifteen dollars. It's not super expensive. I've been using it since it was a beta and free. And I yeah, think so it's you understand well worth it's paying for it. It's really nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice, and it, it's sort of like a lightweight Microsoft Word, but you use um, keyboard shortcuts that are kind of Markdown related, or can use Markdown code, right? So if you type like hashtag, whatever, it will turn it into a Title One heading. You know, nice. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I stumble over a little bit is the way it handles um, URL insertion. Like if you want to make something a hyperlink, you have to really <laughs> you, you have to overcome your muscle memory because the way you do it in word and everywhere else is a little bit different. And that, that part's a little interesting, but as far as making, um, markdown mainstream, I would say this is really nice because what you're looking at is basically a rich text document with formatting, but if you, but you can just type normally, you could use menus and stuff if you want to select styles, but if you know the codes, which I do, you can just type the codes, right? It's and then really it pretty it. too. It's, it's a very yeah, it's really elegant, nice. simple. Yeah. Have you ever, I mean, it's the prettiest of them all. Um, it only yep. has a few yep. different templates, but you, you can download more. You can download more. Yeah. 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 Have you ever used Obsidian, the note app Obsidian? Eesh. It does I that. I, it does that uh, markdown conversion. It actually does. So this is cool things. With note, isn't this a notion type app, but it it's does not use like markdown? notion. It's a, it's more of a kind of a plain vanilla note taking app, but it's fully yeah. markdown. And they have various okay. uh, preview settings, including one that when you take your 
you know, you stop typing or you lift your mouse, it will then preview it. And then as soon as you start typing, it cool. goes back to. Oh, that's markdown. interesting. So that's. I'm going to look at that. So it's thank you for screening that up. Um, yeah, that one's free. <laughs> it's not nearly as pretty. It. Typora is gorgeous. I, I will say so. I, oh, I should say, too. I'm sorry. I, I, one of the reasons I didn't go with Visual Studio Code is. I write the things I write. 99% of the time end up in WordPress. So outputting to WordPress is key and it has to be clean, right? So markdown pad, it's a little convoluted, but you can select HTML code type paste into the code editor part of um, um, WordPress and then go back to the visual style and it looks fine. You know, it, it looks fine, but visual studio code doesn't. And it, it actually adds styles uh, to the HTML code. And I, Mm -mm. It can't, it can't be like that. So Typora, it's a little ponderous because you do have to cut, co you can do copy HTML code and then you have to paste it into the, the code editor in WordPress, not the, Does, um, editor. but it's it still saves out as that dot MD file. So, right. You could just do it. You can do that, but I need, but I don't know how that does it. Can you import directly from MD into WordPress? I don't WordPress? know. I don't, That's a, it I don't should think be. you can. Should be able to open a I file. Couldn't agree. I couldn't agree. Could not agree more. Maybe That'd not. be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's that was part of it. So Typora does I, clean mark. The reason I use Typora also is it's completely cross platform. Windows, Mac, Linux. Yep. It's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. I really like Typora. So I just re so I, you know, just reinstalled it and it of course you you I have a code because I paid for it. And I pasted it in and it said, You've used the maximum number of like and I'm like, Oh, come on, are you kidding me? But it just said click OK and it will remove the license from the last one that oh, was that's used, the right which is probably to do it. Yeah. Which is the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So Very that nice. was great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the other app, and I, I think I might have recommended this as recently as a week or two ago, is Firefox. And the reason is the latest version of Firefox on Windows 11 now supports efficiency mode, which is that feature we talked about at some point recently. Um, right now, the only app that natively supports efficiency mode out of the box, I believe, is Microsoft Edge. And I believe that Firefox might be the second web browser to support it. But this is the thing that individual processes, which can be tabs or whatever other processes in the uh, in the application, will run in a more efficient mode that doesn't hammer the CPU and thus will be better for battery life as well. And I have this belief that efficiency mode, based on what Microsoft has said, is probably going to expand in uh, the coming months and years to do other things as well. But right now, that's what it does do. And I know I had a tip or we discussed at some point how you can, if you have an app that's hung, and by the way, this would have come up because of all the issues I was having, one of the things you can do is go into task manager and put a process in that app into efficiency mode and see if that doesn't solve the problem before you kill it. Um, that's an, an impossibility on a web browser, by the way, but you can do it with other apps. Um, but now Firefox supports it natively. So you don't have to, it's not something you have to manage. It just does it for you. I think the way Firefox does it is a little different from uh, edge in that I believe it's only background processes right now. I could be wrong about that, but I th I don't think they'll apply efficiency mode. Like they don't sleep tabs. I think in the same way that uh, Edge does. But uh, like I said, I think it's the I think it's the second, the first non Microsoft app to support efficiency mode. I think. And then this is unrelated to anything else. Although this will make you want to drink. <laughs> um, I have a word of the week today, and um, you might this imagine is good. my I wife. I want you to do this every week. I love this. So my wife and I are, are writers and yeah, uh, we have words. conversations to us that are interesting that I think would bore the living <laughs> hell out of anybody else. Like that, we just, we will be reading uh, the paper on our devices in the morning and one of us will say, Hey, check out this headline. Or do you know what I'll, I'll see a word in a New York times article. Like, have you, I'm like, do you know what this word is? You know? And uh, this was one of those words. So you've heard of synonyms, right? Which are words yeah. that mean the same thing. Yeah. You've heard of antonyms, opposites, probably, which opposites, are opposites. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Homonyms, right? Homonyms, they sound words the same, that, but they mean different things. All yeah. right. So have you heard of, con there you go, exactly. <laughs> have you heard of contronyms? No. I have not. A so, word, let me guess. Don't tell me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, a word that contradicts another word. So raining, <laughs> rainy and sunny would be contronyms. Is that a guess? Is that a good guess? No, 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 no. So those are, those are uh, antonyms, right? Or antonyms, yeah, they're opposites. Yeah. yeah. So they're words that, so the, the official description is they are words that are their own opposites. The, the literal meaning of the word is it's, it's really words that can mean two things that are opposites. So oh, I like the that. The best example I can think of, and there's an excellent sentence that goes with this, is the word left 
which can mean multiple things. But two of the things it could mean are remaining or departed, right? So the gentlemen have left, but the ladies are left. <laughs> right? Oh, I like that. Yeah. So there's a bunch of examples I could give you if you want. Um, seed. Seed. You can seed your lawn or you can seed a tomato. When you seed the lawn, you're adding seeds. When you seed a tomato, you're removing them. Oh, that's so good. What a great idea. Yeah. So there's a bunch of these give things. Give me some more. Um, more and more contronyms. Yeah. More, off. More, Polly. More. Off. <laughs> okay. So off. the word off typically means deactivated as in turning off. Right. Right. But it also means activated as in the alarm went off. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Weather. I don't mean weather like the sun. I mean weather like a weathered oh, rock weather. or something. Weather. So, yes. Weather. Yeah. Weather. weather. Could mean uh, can mean to withstand yes. something or come safely through something or to be worn away. Oh. In other words, yes. the company re weathered the recession, but the rock was weathered by the rain. Who knew a contronym? Screen. Screen is a good one. Screen. Yep. You yeah. can show a movie. Or you can hide something. You can, uh, like an unsightly something, you can screen it. English, is there nothing it can't do? This is the dumbest language ever invented, and we're all suffering because I of wonder it. if those exist in other languages. They must. So, yeah, so these are, um, I, I wouldn't call these exceptions, but I, I know when we were learning French, like one of the tough things about French is that there's so many exceptions. Um, uh, uh, to, um well, no, I was going to say gender. Gender is not a good example because gender in, is just arbitrary. A, we, a river is feminine and a, right. the Eiffel Tower is masculine right, or something. Right. I, uh, it's not, that's not a good example of it. But there are, there are rules to the language, grammar rules, but then there are exceptions. Yeah, um, transitive Spanish, and intransitive verbs, for instance, which we have yeah. also. Yeah. We have, <clears> uh, the English is the worst of all. It, it is the worst. We're just <clears> used to it. Yeah. You know? um, Spanish has fewer exceptions than. Um, English, other than French. But one of the interesting, I'm trying to think of an example of this. Um, I bet German has no contronyms. I bet everything means exactly <laughs> what German, it thinks it means. German only has contronyms. <laughs> 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 what was the thing in Spanish? There was a thing in Spanish about double, like if you, um, I'm trying to think, I, I have to make up a word, like a, a word like willow, right? It has two L's in the middle of it. Yeah. If that word was in Spanish, it would always only have one L. Right. Like otherwise that's it'd be not but there is no version of that word with two L's. Like there's, that's something interesting about Spanish. I wish I had a better example because that's not a real Spanish word, but um, words that look like they're English and in English would be spelt with two, you know, two letters in a row always are just one letter. There's, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't come up with a good example of that one, but language is interesting. Anyway, I was uh, as, uh, you know, like a, I'm not like a Pulitzer Prize winning writer, but I am a writer and I, I've never heard this term. So um, anyway, contronym. There you Nor go. had I. And I am, um, language is one of my favorite things. Yeah. I love it. Oh, you'd love it in our house in the morning. Talk you all swing the time. By. Yeah. Yeah. I don't write. I talk, but it's still the same language. <laughs> I've always been, I've always loved words. I've always been fascinated. Yeah. Contronym. That's a great concept. All right. Thank you. And there thank are other you. names for a contronym, by the way, I should well, say. Well, what else? Self antonym. <laughs> okay. And that and an and an teodrome. Oh, antiodrome. Right. Well, if you'd said that, I would have known. Antigonim. Antigonim. <laughs> I can't get it. I, I like antigonim. I, Contronym I think, makes more sense. Isn't that like isn't that a character in a Shakespeare yeah, play? Antigonim. Yeah. Hey, Antigonim, thou hast brought me many words. I told, did I tell you this? I took a, I was taking a test recently and the woman asked me who wrote Hamlet. And I said, oh God, I'm never going to remember that guy's name. Like Lynn Manuel or something. And she goes, no, Hamlet. And I said, Not Hamilton. oh, Shakespeare. I was like, I was like wondering why you were asking me that. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> okay. Don't She's go like, on Jeopardy. Been, Just my, uh, my advice. Heard of Shakespeare? Be very oh, no, humiliating. Who wrote Hamlin? Oh, Lin Manuel Miranda. I love the Paying rhymes. attention, you know. Yeah. It's just you gotta. It's just job one. Just show up, you know. <laughs> Paul the Rot. He's gonna show up tomorrow. We're gonna have a lot of fun with our best. Uh, well, no, it's not a best of. It's a holiday uh, twit. Right. Uh, and of course, our best ofs will come up in a couple of weeks. Next week, Rich Campbell joins us. That's gonna be a lot of yeah. fun from Run As mm -hmm. Radio and uh, dot dot net rocks. That's right. Uh, and Rich was on the. Uh, cruise with us 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I was and, just listening to dot rocks, dot net rocks today, actually. Yeah, it's a great show. So that'll Billy be Hollis. fun. It's good stuff. But I hope he brings some brown liquor. <laughs> he's he's well, taught me everything I know about brown liquor. Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. Uh, that'll be next week. The following week, uh, the best of, and then uh, all new episodes in 2023. How to get to 2023 starting January 4th. We do Windows Weekly on uh, Wednesdays at about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Unless Leo's standing on the desk. That sometimes delays it. <laughs> 1900 UTC. Got a lot of mileage out of my picture of that. I love that on, picture. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw it on Mastodon. <laughs> Paul's tootin' now at Therat at twit.social. Right. Houston and tootin'. He's a tootin'. Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh what else i know it's all gone out clean out of my head if you're watching us live you should chat with us live at irc.twit.tv of course you can only if you're a club twit member the place to chat is the fabulous club twit discord which is a lot of fun i know you go in there as well paul uh and mary Mm -hmm. joe is hung out i hope it'd be nice if mary joe would just pop by once in a while (laughs) well i'll recommend that she'll be on her phone in a bar somewhere yeah Every once yeah. in a while, it's just kind of fun when somebody shows up. Uh, you got to be a member of Club Twit. How do you get into Club Twit? Oh, I'm glad you asked. How do you get into Club Twit, Leo? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, all you got to do is spend seven dollars a month. Now wait, now wait. I know that's a lot of money. It's a buck less than a blue check on Twitter, but it's a lot of money. Here's my suggestion: <laughs> you go to twit.tv/clubtwit and you see what you get for that seven bucks a month. You get ad-free versions of all of our shows. You get access to the Toot Toot Discord. <laughs> you get, you're also supporting. This is like, like license to GIF or whatever. License like GIF. license to license meme. License to you know? GIF. Yep. Yep. Uh, and uh, speaking of gifts, it'd be a great gift for the uh, the geek in your life. We have a year-long package. It'd be a good gift uh, as well as the monthly. You also get the um, Twit Plus feed, which includes something else you might want, which is Paul Therott's amazing Hands on Windows show. That's a club special. Every once in a while we put one in public, but most of them are in the club, as is Micah Sargent's Hands on Mac and the Untitled Linux show. So I want to strongly encourage uh, membership in Club Twit. It really makes a big difference for us. It evens out the ups and downs of advertising, mostly down lately. So it really will help us uh, continue to do the stuff we want, including... You know, all these uh, show ideas and, and so forth that we would like to do, but they're too new to have an audience. And so we do them with the club. The club supports it. <sighs> Twit.tv slash club twit. little plug for that. After the fact, of course, we still make ad-free ver- uh, ad-supported versions of all of our shows available on our website, twit.tv slash WW. You'll also find it uh, on YouTube. There's a dedicated YouTube channel to Windows Weekly to all the shows. And you can always subscribe in your podcast client. That's probably the best way to do it. So you get it automatically the minute it's available. Paul Therott lives at therott.com. He's posting there regularly, T-H-U-R-R-O, double good.com. Uh, nope. If you are a premium member, you get a lot of extra content that's really worth it. Um, therott.com. And his field guide to Windows 11 is out now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if, you know, when you buy it, it's kind of not a static dead tree item it <laughs> is true. always updated there's always more in, in fact there's also the field guide to windows 10 included so it's a really mm-hmm. good deal that's all at leanpub.com leanpub.com indeed indeed has indeed. it snowed yet in lower mccungee no um well just a, you know with that one time dusting. dusting we got one yeah. time but we, we, there's some storm heading across the united states that might be a mix of rain and that snow was tomorrow be a big in, yeah yeah we'll see well stay warm stay safe and 36 uh, degrees leo there's no staying warm oh, <laughs> it's oh. not it's uh, not good it hurts you wondered why i bought a place in mexico uh-huh mm. the balmy sun well are you gonna go to mexico for the holidays no, um, no, we're going to go sometime, either January or February. They must take advantage of the nice weather down there. That's January sure. and February. I yeah. don't know, something like that. Just move there. <laughs> we'll Come on. We know you want to move yeah. there. Come on. Thank you, Paul. The beauty of it is you, you can do this show from anywhere, and I hope you will mm-hmm. continue to. We'll see you next week with Rich Campbell on Windows yeah. Weekly. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 
Don't miss All About Android every week. We talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops. Really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, All About Android, on twit.tv.